football either on the ground or through the air so what he's trying to get is a play out of the quarterback position whether it be getting out of the pocket and completing a pass or the quarterback running for some first downs when your quarterback isn't playing well offenses seem to suffer ball states paul shudell will also change up at quarterback here this afternoon he goes with a freshman redshirt mike new at 6'4 and 190 pounds yes and at 6'4 190 some pounds mike new is able to run the football but he has an excellent throwing arm ball state Again, inconsistency in the pass offense. They have an excellent running attack, but they can't get anything with the pass. So, of course, Paul Shudell trying his luck with Mike Newton. And the player who spearheads that running attack is the senior tailback Bernie Parmalee, one of the best of all time in the MAC. Bernie Parmalee is an outstanding player. Why? Because not only can he run the football, he can run through the tackles and he can run outside the tackles, and he has great speed. But he is an excellent pass catcher out of the backfield, and I like that. And so is Leroy Smith, the talented sophomore for both. Bowling Green, if he's healthy today. Yeah, uh, Leroy Smith burst on the scene last year as a freshman, showed tremendous strength as a runner, and of course, he also catches the football out of the backfield well. The problem today with Leroy Smith, he has a bad ankle, but I think that because they're playing on grass today, he will have an opportunity to, I think, play in spite of the pain that he's feeling. Well, with both offenses sputtering a little bit, field position should be key here this afternoon. BG has one of the best punters in the country in Chris Shale. He'll be called on today. Second in the nation in punting. 48.2 yards a kick. Has excellent hang time, and he is also very adroit at kicking the football out of bounds inside the 20. If Bowling Green has a chance to win today, they're going to have to play strong defense and then let Chris Shell punt the ball so that Ball State has to uh, run the long, long field all day. All right, and of course, if Ball State gets into a situation where they need a field goal to win, they can call on Kenny Stucker. He's been there before. Well, we've seen Kenny Stucker, Zach. Last year, I uh, won a couple of games that, uh, of course, helped Ball State win the Mid American Conference Championship and go on to the California Raisin Bowl. So if the game is on the line in the fourth quarter, put your money on Mr. Stucker. I know it's early on, Reggie. Both teams are 0-1 in conference play. Better not lose another one if you expect to win this thing. No, I think uh, if you lose one today and, and go two down in the loss column in the Mid-American Conference race, uh, it's bye-bye until next year. All right. Well, we'll return now to the sidelines to Michael Regai. Keep in mind that Bowling Green has won five of six here in Muncie. Michael? Denny, that's right. I think that's a very important key to keep in mind. So as the guys just talked about, obviously the loser of this one can pretty much write off any California Raisin Bowl hopes. Don't you go away. Both ball clubs fighting for their Mac lives, if you will. We're coming back with Bowling Green teeing it up with the Cardinals of Ball State from here in Muncie. It's coming up next on our Sports Channel Mac Game of the Week. to Ball State Stadium on the campus of Ball State University in Muncie, Indiana for our MAC Sports Channel Game of the Week. Temperature 66 degrees, not much of a breeze, but uh, a chance of rain perhaps sometime this afternoon, Reggie. Well, we need to get uh, an umbrella for Michael Ray guy, perhaps, <laughs> so it doesn't get wet, but I'm all set to go here. How about you? All right, the officials, there you see them for this afternoon's contest. Kenny Stucker will kick for Ball State. Back deep is Terry Wilson. And this fine drive is over Wilson's shoulder, and he'll gladly down this one, and BG starts on the 20. What a weapon, Kenny Stucker. We talked about his field goal kicking, but we didn't mention much. He also gets the ball into the end zone, preventing the return team from getting any kind of appreciable return yardage. Bowling Green's offensive line, Fitzpatrick, Bosco, and a real pro prospect. Keep yes. on him, Billy Horn, here this afternoon, Aerosmith, and also Nick Sims. Horn is 6'7". There you see the big change at quarterback, Pat Guchardo, Howell, and Smith in the backfield. The receivers, Hankins, Jackson, and Slechik. Opening series for BG here, and they'll start from their 20-yard line. In the passing game, Hankins has the speed, and Slechik is the possession receiver. Leroy Smith off right tackle out across the 25 to about the 26. Good start and good strategy with a quarterback change. You want to give him some confidence. Quarterback's best friend is the running game. Now you see the defensive line, strong and quick. Beagle, also Kendrick, Brannigan, Thompson, and Hall. Henry Hall, an outstanding linebacker. Paris and Stonefield in the middle. And the secondary, a very consistent one. Porter, Turner, Glover, and also Keith Hackett. Told you Leroy Smith coming into this ball game with a sore ankle, but as you tell you, he's happy to see a grass field. Once again to the table back, and the ball is on the ground. Reggie saw the fumble quickly. Ball State comes away with it. That's not what the Falcons wanted. Losing teams always seem to self-destruct in some fashion. Bowling Green a 
gotten off to a good start with the running game. And I didn't see a problem with the exchange. The exchange looks good. It looks like Leroy Smith, number 19, watch it here. Pretty good exchange. Uh, Leroy Smith just never had the football. I mean, he never grasped that thing like you want him to do it very securely. And Henry Hall, as you could. Henry Hall, the player who comes up with the fumble recovery, so it's first and ten for Ball State at about the 25. Boy, that's a big break. No surprise here. Parmalee tries the left side of that BG defense, and he picks up about three yards. Dwayne Crenshaw in on the tackle, as you see the down people, or make that the offensive line, rather, for Ball State. Excellent crew there. A couple of... Uh, Todd Wright, first first team All Mid American Conference lineman. New quarterback Mike New, Smith and Parmalee. Once again, a fullback and tailback for Paul Schudel. Second down, Parmalee this time to the right side dives for a couple more. He's tripped up at about the 20 yard line. Don't forget what we told you about Ball State. They have Kenny Stucker, so they can afford to play this thing kind of conservatively right now because they know they're within Stucker's range. Brings up now third down and five as we run through the Bowling Green defense. Keep in mind, Charles Dotson, their leading tackler, did not make the trip. He was injured. And also starting cornerback Ken Burris is not here as well. First big play for New. Finds an open receiver in Parmalee, and he is drilled at about the 16-yard line. There is the versatility and the talent of a Bernie Parmalee. We talked about how good he is running. He has handled the ball three straight times now. Parmalee, all he does here is he gets down enough for the first yard. That's, that's the first down. He gets enough yardage for the first down, hooks up, and makes sure that he has a catch. Good play by Parmalee. Crenshaw in on the tackle. That's the 11th reception of the season for Bernie Parmalee. First down and 10 now. Cardinals uh, in an excellent position to take the early lead in this one. Parmalee on the pitch, tries the right side, and he's down near the 10 yard line. Ball State that time using formations and movement to create a natural seam in the defense. There's the replay. You see number 88, Mike Lejeur, going down, clearing out and blocking. Those wide receivers are looking for somebody to block downfield. There's Parmley just putting his head and shoulders down and getting whatever he can there. Ball just outside the 10-yard line. Second down and about six. Well, it's been all Parmley early on. <laughs> He's wrapped up right at the line of scrimmage. Mark Ross in on the tackle for BG. Well, I think that Paul Shudell knows how important this ball game is. He's the defending Mid-American Conference uh, champion, and he wants to get off to a good start early. And what better player to give the football to now five consecutive times than Bernie Parmley, who can do everything with the football. Parmley number two in the Mid-American Conference right now in rushing behind Mr. Parker of Toledo. You called it right, Mr. Parker. <laughs> he's, a, he's a good one up there. Well, Can't wait in, to see him. <laughs> when you're in the top five in the country, you got to say mister, right? Third down and five. Another big play for Mike New, the freshman quarterback. Right back to Parmalee. He's stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Just nowhere to go. Yeah, uh, number one, Terry Wilson from Bowling Green diagnosed that play and got into the backfield and makes this play. Now, Terry Wilson, number one, is a 200-pound safety who hits well, and as you'll see him come left side of the screen here, you'll see number one. Look at that good, hard, high tackle by Terry Wilson. 29-yard attempt for Kenny Stucker, who has made 10 of his last 11 field goals. Make it now 11 of his last 12. He's just Mr. Automatic as the Ball State Cardinals take an early 3-0 lead. We'll take a break here from Ball State Stadium. 10.51 left to go in the opening quarter. Kenny Stucker's 29-yard field goal puts Ball State ahead three to nothing. That's not what Mo Ankeny wanted, Reggie. No, not when you're on the road and you've got a hostile crowd and, of course, you've got uh, an inexperienced and young quarterback playing. You want everything to go your way, but I think overcoming adversity is the mark of a good football team, and we'll just have to see if Bowling Green is able to do that. Stucker again. 
again gets plenty of foot into this one and Wilson catches it near the back line. So once again, BG starts first and 10 from the 20. Well, I think they'll go back if right to uh, Leroy Smith. Uh, Smith is the one that fumbled that football, but of course, if Bowling Green has a chance to win the day, it's going to be Leroy Smith who's going to be very instrumental in that. So I would think that the first thing you want to do now is give the football back to him again so he can regain his confidence. Well, in years past, very few running plays out of Bowling Green. It was more, let's go to the air. Air Bowling Green, they called it for a long time here. Yeah. It's the most they've run in about eight or nine years. Well, you called it correctly. Smith tries to bounce to the outside. He's wrapped up little or no gain whatsoever on that running play. One thing about Ball State that is difficult to do is get outside because Ball State does not have big corner people. They have very quick outside linebackers who can run around some of these blocks. So I would think if you're going to attack Ball State, you have to go right at them with power plays. Sean Turner, number five, in on the tackle that time. Brings up second down and ten. No gain whatsoever. Opening quarter here from Ball State Stadium. Cardinals lead three to nothing over BG. Play action. Gachardo looks to the right and hits Jim Howell out of the backfield for a gain of about five. Second reception on the season for Howell, who was the only offensive player that graded out a plus last week at Central Michigan. Yes, he was, and uh, he slips out of the backfield there and makes a, that's the outlet pass. They didn't really want to throw to him, but the initial receiver was covered. That's one of the reasons why Gachardo is getting a start, because he is able to come off of the primary receiver and hit the second and third receivers. Third down play, third and about six for Bowling Green. Gachardo, three-step drop, looks... That's Makes interference the there. Throw and Slaychik huh. was run into before he even turned around, but no call on the play. I wonder why they didn't call this because there's obvious contact before the ball gets to the receiver. Let's take a look at it from end zone action. The right of your screen, you're going to see. You see, look at the defender making contact with Slaychik, number 84, before the ball gets there. Slaychik is saying, hey, where's the call? I kind of agree with him there, Denny. Back deep, Keith Hackett, Chris Shale to punt, and look at this rocket take off. Hackett at about the 20, plenty of running room. Finally upended at about the 34-yard line. John McGrady in on the tackle for the special teams, but uh, Shale caught that one pretty good for the opening kick. Yeah, we're going to try to keep you abreast of what he does today because I think he'll be a big factor in whether Bowling Green has a chance to win the football. And just make them, make Ball State go the long field every time they have an opportunity to. And hang time is a critical factor in that. That was more of a line drive. It yes. gave Hackett a chance to run that one back. Single back set for Ball State. Parmalee started... Off right tackle, then kind of reversed gears out past the 41. Some nifty running there by the senior tailback. See, Paul Shudell is keeping any potential pressure off of Mike New because he has the veteran Bernie Parmalee here to shoulder the weight. Here's Parmalee there. Good blocking, good running. This guy has excellent vision. You can see his feet, good footwork, and then he picks the right holes. Second down and four. Cardinals have been averaging better than four yards per carry on first down throughout the season. A little delay. Parmalee this time, though, with no room whatsoever and manages to get back to about the line of scrimmage. That's good pursuit and good defensive play that time by Bowling Green. Take another look at it right here. Parmalee wants to get to the outside, but outstanding contain by Dal McDonald. And of course, there's nowhere to go. Kevin O'Brien in on the tackle. Third down and four. Back to a twin set in the backfield. New sets up. Tries to scramble out. Down the sidelines, and the pass is picked off on a beautiful defensive play turned in by Carlos Brooks. Not a very good decision by Mike New in that situation. Credit the front five of Bowling Green with forcing this because Mike New has a lot of pressure on him as you can see right there 
He's going to throw this football out there, and he hangs it up a little bit, and Carlos Brooks, number 10, steps in front of Parmalee for the interception. Second career interception for Carlos Brooks, and that's the kind of a break that Mo Ankeny's team was looking for. You, you see a freshman quarterback chased out of the pocket, and he made a mistake. And we said it's going to be Bowling Green's defense if they have a chance, and that was number 92, Carl Kendrick, who forced that play. So BG now sets up the offense at about the 36-yard line, by far and away their best field position here in the opening quarter. They trail 3-0, play action. Pichardo chased out of the pocket, puts his head down, and dives to about the 32-yard line, gain of about four. That's what they're looking for from Guchardo. Make a play every now and then. And, of course, he pulled that down quickly and decided to run. He's only 160 pounds, so he's got a lot of nerve. Here's another look at it. Fake the draw play. So he's looking. Nothing there. Just takes straight up the field. Take what, what's there. Second down and making about seven now for BG. Inside it goes to Howell, the fullback, to about the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and short. Don Stonefield in on the stop that time for the Cardinals. Jim Howell, he provides sort of the thankless job of blocking and doing all the dirty work. Good pass catcher out of the backfield. Pretty much an inexperienced offensive team. They lost seven starters from a year ago. Howell's one of the only seniors back. Mm -hmm. Well, one of those seniors, Billy Horn, that big guy up front at center, 6'7", about 275 pounds. The professionals like him a lot. Jackson in motion. Quick pitch goes to Leroy Smith, who tries to get to the corner, and he does. Finally knocked down at about the 26, but going to be short, I believe, of a first down. Very close. Don Stonefield once again in on the tackle. Leroy Smith just drifting down the line of scrimmage, looking for an opening. Has the speed to get outside, and then watch this. He just takes that little lean right up inside there, and it's going to be very close there in for a measurement. And we've also got a player down. Number 27, Leo Porter right now, appears to be shaken up, and it looks like it might be an ankle problem. Leo Porter is the starting left cornerback. Second team All-Mid-American Conference performer a year ago. See if we can catch it. Number 27. There he is, Leo Porter. He gets his hit. Oh, look at his look right there. His right knee. Wow. Porter still down right now and uh, being tended to. Uh, it's going to be fourth down and about a foot and a half for Bowling Green. That was one of the things that I used to try to do was when I got into a pileup like that and I knew I was going to not be able to break my fall or protect myself. You just have to let your body go limp. If there's a way you can do it, you just let yourself go. You don't resist anything. And I think the, the muscles and the tendons and all those things in the body seem to uh, come out better when you do it that way. Paul Shudell has really made a name and a home for himself here in Muncie, Indiana. Reggie and I had a chance to chat with him yesterday, and he talked about what great progress has already been made here at the university for the football program and how much he enjoys living here. And he's made tremendous progress with the... Uh, with the academic side for his football players, too. He is the only Division I coach in the country with an academic All-America for five consecutive years. Demands excellence in the classroom. If you don't get there and get it handled, you aren't going to play. And Mo Ankney. On the other side of the 50-yard line, Mo Ankney, the head coach for Bowling Green. Mo Ankney was the defensive secondary coach here at Ball State in 1971 through 1975 under the late... Dave McLean. So Ankney's decision to go for it, perhaps here on fourth down and short yardage to try and keep this drive alive. I think it's a good call. Uh, you know, you're on the road, so you have to play for the win, and there's no playing for the ties in this situation. And you talk about being on the road, that's all BG has seen this year. This is their fourth consecutive game away from home. Road hogs. Not an easy task. They're one and two on the season. Power eye formation. Smith gets the call, He's and plenty it. of running room for Leroy Smith, who showed a little power that time. Yeah, Leroy Smith lined up in the power eye behind Chris Byer, number 34, and, of course, Jim Howell, number 35, and they just fire at the left side. Now watch it. Watch all the thrust and power that's going right into this hole. Leroy Smith does not do anything but put that helmet right on the back of that lead blocker and picks up the first down. 
Horn and Bosco opening up some room along that left side. So it's first and ten now. 6.37 left to go in the opening quarter. BG with their first sustained drive. Back to the running game. High-stepping Leroy Smith for about three more off left tackle. Now we talked about Bowling Green having been air Bowling Green in the past. They had, of course, uh, Reggie Thornton and uh, Ron Hurd, who went in the NFL draft. Of course, Ron Hurd is playing for the San Diego Chargers. But now they look around and they see a lot of outstanding runners, of course, led by that man right there, Leroy Smith. And it isn't one doing one thing or the other. Uh, Mo Ankney is just doing with what he has best. Of course, we haven't seen yet Zeb Jackson or George Johnson, a couple of very talented freshman tailbacks that we'll be seeing some action in this one for BG as well. Smith runs hard to the left side and uh, ran right into a stone wall at about the 19. Obviously, they think they've found something on the right side of the defensive line for Ball State. One of the things that you talked about and also Coach Paul Shudell last night was the fact that Ball State doesn't have big, strong defensive linemen or linebackers. They're very quick, so the power game may work against them. Yeah, and I told, and I said to uh, Paul Shudell, I said, well, you probably have and see a lot of the power formations with those lead blockers and those wham blockers coming in. And he sort of laughed because obviously that's what Bowling Green is having some success with. Third down and six for Gachardo. This time hands it off to Leroy Smith, who is not going to be even close, wrapped up by the entire defensive team at about the 20-yard line. And see, if you're Leroy Smith, you have to know what the strength of the Cardinal defense is, and that is pursuit and quickness. So if you go into the line now and there isn't anything there, just make the most of it because if you do this, you're going to lose yardage because he isn't going to get outside and outrun these people. They're too quick. Todd Powell on to try a 37-yard field goal. He is two for two on the season. Got plenty of it, but he hooked it. So Powell misses to the left, and BG blows the scoring opportunity. And we'll now pause for this. Difference in the score, a field goal by Kenny Stucker with 4.31 left to go in the opening quarter. Up to Jordan, Michael on the beat for the dive! Yeah! Whoa! Bulls basketball on Sports Channel, there's nothing like it. Yes! That's deep to left field! Get it out! Bradley on a track, looks up! Put it on the board! White Sox baseball on Sports Channel, there's nothing like it. Trying to change it, he does, he shoots, he scores! Steve Larmer! The Blackhawks Sports Channel, there's nothing like it. He's at the 50, it's a race, and Ismail is gone! Touchdown, Notre Dame! Notre Dame football on Sports Channel, there's nothing like it. Sports Channel. There's nothing like it. Bowling Green with a shot to tie it up, Reggie, but uh, the field goal went awry. Still 3-0 Ball State. We saw an excellent transition defense by Ball State that time, shutting down the Bowling Green offense when it got down in scoring territory. Mo oh, Ankeny has to be wondering, what do I have to do to get some points on the board? Look of frustration. First and 10 now from the 20-yard line for Ball State. Play action. New makes the quick throw. Pass is caught and then dropped, and they're going to say the pass was incomplete. That's a nice move by Mike New. Showed a lot of athletic ability. He actually leaned to the left with his body and threw back to the right with his arm. Looking for Frank Barnes, the tight end. Now watch this. Sometimes those openings are very, very narrow. Frank Barnes should make this catch because the ball hits him right in the chest. Good vision of the field that time by the freshman quarterback. Second down and 10. BG shows blitz on this play. And they'll back off. Parmalee off right tackle. Faked inside. Bounce to the outside. He's got some running room. And Parmalee showing that tailback speed. Finally chased out of bounds near midfield. 
That's a player who has greater ability than anybody on the defensive team. He lulled the Bowling Green defense into this play because he just snuck along the line of scrimmage until he felt that the containment had come close to the line of scrimmage, and then he just outruns everybody. See, watch that. You see that move in there? That's a good dip move, and now he just outruns everybody. Carlos Brooks just can't catch him. Just runs out of turf. And they're going to say he was chased out of bounds now at the 37. So almost a breakaway play for Parmalee out of the backfield. Hand off to the fullback inside for a couple. Crenshaw in on the tackle. I know someone who's going to be very, very tired when this ball game is over. <laughs> Bernie Parmalee He's handled the ball 95% of the time. Well, he accounts for better than 40% of the offense on this team. He's a marked man, but you have to be impressed with his performance because you know week in and week out, people are taking shots at him. Yeah, he's six foot, 200 pounds, good physique, very strong legs, and very quick. Gain of a couple on the first play. Fake pitch on the bootleg. Pass is completed. Nice mobility shown that time as Scott Jones comes up with the first down reception. That play becomes effective because the run play with Parmalee has been so successful. And this is a play action. Good setup right there by Mike New. No one's covering Scott Jones. Terry Wilson on the tackle. Well, the starting tight end, Frank Barnes, has yet to catch a pass this season. That's the second catch on the air for Scott Jones. First Scott. and 10 now from the 49. Travis Moore in motion. A flag on the play. Parmalee chased to the outside. And in pursuit, making the tackle is Dwayne Crenshaw. Procedure call. Yeah. Nothing. Now listen now. It's well, we do have our referee mic'd today. See Dwayne Quinshaw right there. Bowling Green missing its leading tackler. Illegal shift, red. Illegal shift, offense. Still right. first down. Fullback was moving up, guys. Bowling Green a little bit shorthanded without Charles Dotson, who's their leading tackler. Yeah, Dotson on the season with 45 tackles, 300 hits in his career, and uh, without him, there's a gaping hole in the defense. Yeah, and he's in that inside linebacker position for Bowling Green. He's responsible for making those tackles from his position out to the sideline, and of course, uh, that's where Parmalee is having a lot of success. First and 15, first penalty in this one. Ball State just killed themselves a week ago with three holding penalties against Toledo. New tailback, Parmalee obviously getting a rest, and Corey Kroom comes in and picks up a couple on his first carry. But when they do go to Corey Kroom, they don't slip a whole lot. Kroom is a big, strong runner out of Sandusky, Ohio. Let's take a look at him right here. Number 29, Corey Kroom, bounces off his own man, but another one of those Ball State backs that's able to find just a little seam in the defense and make something out of it. Kroom on the season with one touchdown, averaging about three and a half yards per carry. Second down now in 13. Straight drop for New. Sets up shop, takes a look downfield, makes a beautiful throw into the secondary, and the pass is caught by Mike LaShure. That's a tough throw to make because Mike New had someone in his face. And I think if he's not six feet, four inches tall, he doesn't get this throw away. Watch it now. It's a zone defense. People are right in his face, and he throws this ball overhand over the top, and you can see Lejeure making that catch. Excellent pattern. Mike Hack was there, but the ball right over the top of his fingertips as a uh, nice touch shown that time by Mike New, the freshman redshirt quarterback. Hand off inside to Rhodes, bounces off three different people and is down near the 31-yard line. That's just strength. Terry Wilson in on the tackle from the BG secondary. I mean, Rhodes is only about 200 pounds for a fullback, and that's not real big. 
but you can see him bounce off some people, break a couple of tackles. Shows a lot of determination. Quarter number one winding down, 115 left to go. Ball State leading three to nothing and currently driving. Play action, new rolls out, spots a receiver, and it's in and out of the fingertips of Kenneth Rhodes. Hmm. Another one of those sidearm throws by Mike New. Now watch him throw sidearm again. Just off the tip, fingertips. Is that a tough catch when you're running laterally like that? Uh, no, I think that's a, for, to that side, it's a, it's a pretty good catch as most right-handers have their right hand stopping the ball. It would be difficult going to the left if he's a right-hander. Third down and seven. Out of the shotgun. Rush comes right up the middle. They set up the screen. Harmony is pulled down by Carlos Brooks, who's been all over the field. Carlos Brooks looks like he was spying on that play. And by spying, I mean sitting in the secondary or just behind the line of scrimmage, keying on one man. Now, this is a screen all the way. No one was fooled. Harmony is right there, but so is Carlos Brooks, number 10. A 48-yard field goal attempt for Kenny Stocker, who has already hit a 29-yarder in this one. This is well within his range. Gets plenty of foot into it, and the 48-yarder is good, so Stucker has been the difference, Reggie, in this one. I mean, he hit that like a nice little two-iron. I mean, that th baby was low and rising when it went through the uprights. What a weapon, Kenny Stucker, number eight. He's been through all of the tough kicks, been through the pressure games. You haven't seen nothing yet from him. Kenny Stucker now, Reggie, 42 of 54 in his career in kicking field goals. He's now hit 12 of his last 13. That is phenomenal. That's why Ball State, as you take a look at that kick, he stays down, good extension, but Ball State doesn't have to gamble when it's in field goal range. Don't do anything to take yourself out of Kenny Stucker's range, and it's a surety almost that you're going to pick up three more points. Of course, they've had some terrific field goal kickers through the years here at Ball State. John Dietrich is a name that jumps up. He led the nation for a couple of different seasons, I think, in percentage of good kicks. So it's a couple of field goals off the right foot of Kenny Stucker. The difference in this one thus far as Ball State's leading now six to nothing. On the other hand, Bowling Green's defense is playing pretty well because they haven't given up a touchdown and they have held Ball State, even though Ball State has had some opportunities to just the three pointers. And you can see a touchdown and an extra point puts them ahead in this game. single safety and if you're having trouble hearing us out there along the network this afternoon we're uh, right above the Ball State band they have been uh, boisterous here this afternoon yeah, it sounded like 50 guys playing off key <laughs> again I think uh, you might be correct there there you get a good view of where Reggie and I are located takes it about five yards deep and once again Stucker has pinned BG back at their own 20 yard line. Once again it's Pat Gachardo the quarterback and you have to wonder how many series he will get Reggie before Mo Ankeny maybe goes back to sophomore signal caller Eric White. Well that's interesting because when uh, you know you got some instability at the quarterback position, sometimes the people that get a chance to play there do look over their shoulders. They're wondering, well, how long is he going to give me before he sends someone else in? I think he has most of the first half to get something going before he'll be replaced. Back to the running game. The pitch to Leroy Smith, who turns the corner and is dragged down after about a one-yard gain. Robert Glover in on the tackle that time for the Cardinals. Robert Glover showed some speed there because we know Leroy Smith can get outside. Watch it here, going to the right of your screen. Leroy Smith has it. Robert Glover just hauls him down from behind. Second down and nine as the Falcons break the huddle. Luchardo making his first ever collegiate start. 
played in parts of three games a year ago. It's number three on the depth chart last year. Pressure is on, and the screen pass complete to Smith, who gets one block and is out near the 25-yard line, and Guchardo really showed some courage on that play. Yeah, well, he had to hold that football until the very last minute and uh, hope that he could get something out of a screenplay that was a very safe play. All right, we'll take a break here as we've run out of time in the opening quarter. Ball State 6, the Falcons nothing. You're watching the MAC Sports Channel Game of the Week. Well, a Falcon on the move right there, and that's what Mo Ankney is hoping his offense does here on this third down and five play. The Cardinals pretty peppy thus far. Yeah, I think in this situation, and, and what Mo Ankney is trying to do is he's not going to put himself in jeopardy here. I don't think he's going to put this thing up. I think whatever he does, it's going to be a safe play, perhaps maybe something to Leroy Smith out of the backfield. Play action. Cuchardo steps up, going way downfield with it, and he had a receiver open in Bobby Green, but he just overthrew it. Well, he crossed me up, and he tried to cross the Ball State defense up also. Bobby Green was streaking down the middle, but there was no chance of a catch. Well, had he lofted the ball a little higher, he might have had a chance to run underneath it. Uh, last week, BG did not get a first down until the fourth quarter. They had only two against Central Michigan. Well, you've got to get the plays from the quarterback position. You've got to get that key pass. You have to get that guy that can come out of the backfield and pick up something uh, running the football. And so far, that's what's holding this offense back. No plays from the quarterback position. Shale again. The first one was 56 yards. This another line driver. Hackett takes it at the 20. Has some running room. And is finally pulled down at about the 41-yard line. So excellent field position for the Cardinals. That's not the type of kick you want from a Chris Shell. You want something with a little more hang time on it to give those coverage people time to get down. That's, a, that's too much return on that punt. And we talked about how important field position would be. This is not uh, the short no. side of the field here, Reggie. No, this isn't. This is You're talking about a 60-yard field here for Ball State. And with Parmley handling the ball so much, you're going to probably put Ball State into position for another Kenny Stucker field goal at, the, at, at least. Now, anything 45 yards and in is within Stucker's range. He's two for two here this afternoon. Just starting quarter number two as Ball State leads six to nothing in the MAC Sports Channel game of the week. Parmalee off right tackle, hit hard, and maybe picks up a yard on the play. Mark Ross with the big hit off the defensive interior line. Good play by Mark Ross, the nose tackle, who gets the penetration here. That's outstanding play by the nose guard. Get into the backfield like that, and you can really disrupt the running attack. So it's now second down and about nine. There you see the numbers thus far on New. He's been fairly effective, although he did make one bad throw on the interception. Rolling to his left, has time to throw a sidearm, a shot that's nearly picked off at about the 40-yard line. Once again, it's Carlos Brooks back there looking for an interception. Yeah, Carlos Brooks is the, is the Johnny on the spot right now, but uh, I'm, I'm not too sure about the sidearm throws from Mike New. He seems to be a little unsettled when he throws the football that way. It takes off on him. Miami of Ohio trailing in Mount Pleasant to Central Michigan, a team that's trying to remain undefeated in Mid-American Conference play. And it's now third down and nine, and out of the shotgun, we see Mike New. And the blitz. Blitz is on, New sees it, starts scrambling for his life, backs up, and simply throws this one away. And so BG forces the freshman quarterback into a fourth down situation. That was a nice move by Mike New. The blitz was on all the way. There were seven people coming. And Mike New, at the end of the plate, turned his body just enough to be able to throw it away. I mean, he averted a huge loss there. So Mike Harrison is on to punt, averaging just a fraction less than 40 yards a kick thus far this season for Ball State. And Bobby Green is back in single safety. What Paul Schudel would like for Mike New to do is to see the blitz coming earlier so he can get out of the play, so he can get rid of the ball quickly. Off the side of his foot, and this one hits at about the 28. Green picks it up and starts looking for some running room and is pulled down at about the 24-yard line, and so that's where BG will start first and 10. 
I think this is the series that Pat Gucciardo really has to get something going because, you know, they haven't shown any signs of movement right now. And I think the quarterback is going is, is the guy that we've been talking about all day. He's going to have to make a play here and there if the Falcons are going to move the ball at all. Hankins split out wide to the right along with Mark Slachik. First down and 10 for BG as they trail six to nothing in this one. Had one good chance for a field goal, but that went awry. Leroy Smith power running out to about the 27 yard line and we've got a sideline report now from Michael Ragan. Denny you know you and Reggie are talking about someone making a big play for Bowling Green. You've got to go back to the second quarter of the Virginia Tech football game three weeks ago to find the last time this BG Falcon offense has gotten any points on the board. They have gone through seven complete quarters scoreless right now. Need I say that has to get rectified before you can start thinking about winning some Mac contest guys. All right Michael as you look at the numbers the BG offense averaging just a little better than 13 points per game that's seventh in the Mid-American Conference. Play action Guchardo looks right and makes the throw and a perfect pass to Slechik who was pulled down at about the 36 yard line. Talking about the big play they must have heard you Michael. Good play action fake. Slechik was running free for about a second or two before Guchardo picked him up. It's a play action pass right here. John that's another of his high school Six buddies feet, now. Six five okay. inches tall Slechik. Not known for his great speed, but uh, a big catch and excellent field position now as BG is on the move with 1240 left to go here in the second quarter. First down and 10. No, that was the Loosening up the secondary a little bit. Smith is pulled down by the ankles and about the 34 yard line. Henry Hall in on the stop for the Cardinals. Henry Hall, very good player, very aggressive outside backer. Good on the pass rush and good against the run. What's a pass like that going to do for Guchardo's confidence, Reggie? He did hit finally a big play and he got him out of a hole. Well, it tells him that he can play in this league and he's going to be effective when he has the opportunities. Second. And it also gives his teammates, excuse me, his teammates a lot of confidence in him. Key factor, you've got to move the offense and put some points on the board. Well, that looked like almost a Cross broken up. play, yep. and Leroy Smith gets trapped at the 39-yard line. Nowhere to go. Toby Beagle in on the tackle. Well, it appears everybody was going uh, to the left, so I have to believe that Guchardo forgot to play. See, watch. You see both backs going left, so Guchardo probably was the one that was confused on the play. Well, now it brings up third down and 14, uh, an obvious passing situation. And this is what you want to stay out of with young quarterbacks because you've got the nickel defense, you have five or six defensive backs, you've got the front people coming, playing uh, pass all the way, so they won't be slowed by any fakes or draw plays. Well, fumbled snap and never took place that time as Horn obviously on a different signal count than was quarterback Luchardo. So the second straight mistake for the quarterback and it's going to cost him five more. Yeah, this, it just looks ugly right now. There just isn't any consistency and that comes with uh, once again we keep talking about it the quarterback position. Well, let's face it. You know you and I were talking last night every college coach in the country is looking for a quarterback that's mm -hmm. going to get the job done. Well, in college football, you know, they handle the ball so much, and, and either with the option or the pass, you just have to have someone there that's a talented athlete that everybody respects. Third down wow. at 19, and Guchardo was right up against the clock and just decided, wait a minute, before we do something else wrong, I'm going to go over and make sure we've got the play called. Well, this play started on about the 30, the 36 yard line of Ball State, and now we're back at the 46 yard line of Ball State, so they've gone backwards. And don't forget following the Fighting Irish all season long is an opportunity that you're going to have only on Sports Channel. You're home for Notre Dame football. Check your local listings for times in your area. Pretty good start. They've won their first couple of games, big games indeed, both in the state of Michigan. Roll the window shut one more time. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
know, Fighting Irish have been playing some thrillers, and I think every football game they play, they're going to have that kind of fight because everybody is pointing towards their date with the Fighting Irish, who are the number one team in the country. Pat Guchardo certainly has to be a memorable afternoon for him. Only a walk-on, Reggie. His brother plays uh, defensive back, I believe, for Kent State University. His dad was a terrific football player. Well, we couldn't even find any information on him uh, as we came to the stadium today. Not even in the press guide. No. <laughs> no. All right, it's third down and 19. Charlo with some time to throw, picks out a receiver, and this one is picked off in the secondary on the deflection. Sean Turner comes away with the football at about the 33. Well, that's what we were talking about in those must-pass situations when you got those five and six defensive backs in the football game. Let's take a look at this play. It appears that Guchardo had a chance right here. It's coming right down the middle. No, he's got double coverage in there. Sean Turner on the tip drill, picks up that football. That was Blaine Bishop with the coverage, one of those extra defensive backs that we were talking about. There's another look at it. Bishop could have had this football himself, but Ball State has it at any rate. So the second time that BG has had an opportunity to maybe put some points on the board, they come up with nothing. And this pass is caught and across midfield. Heck of a play that time. Two receivers in the neighborhood. Cameron Lyron comes away with the football, but there was a cross-up uh, with those patterns. Yeah, I don't think both receivers were supposed to be in the same neighborhood. But... Uh, Cameron Lyman, who's just hanging around in the neighborhood, picks this one off. And I'll tell you what, he shows some running ability here. He's on the move right there. It's a touchdown saving tackle. Not sure, but I think it was Parmalee also out there on the route. So Lyman comes up with the reception. Cardinals across midfield as they lead six to nothing in this one. Parmalee kind of feeling his way across the offensive line and maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Bowling Green is doing a better job the last two series against Parmalee and stopping Parmalee from getting outside because he actually wants to start into the line and then bounce the football outside. Brings up second down now in 10. Excellent crowd on hand here today. Oh, my. Chippewas have jumped ahead quickly on Miami of Ohio, and uh, they're having some fun in Mount Pleasant. Beginning to wonder if anybody can score on Central Michigan. Two shutouts already this year. Shut out BG last week and Cincinnati a couple of weeks ago. New has his pass batted down right at the line of scrimmage. Paul Harris, I think, got a hand up to deflect the ball. I think Mike New holds on to this football just a little too long. He's looking for the receiver. He sets up. Good, strong drop. Looking, looking, looking. See, he's holding the football a little too long. What you want is to deliver that football immediately when the receiver turns to look at you. The intended receiver out of the backfield was Bernie Parmalee. Third down now in 10 with 9.39 left to go in the second quarter. Long count. Pressure is on, and New scrambles out of trouble, looks upfield, and he's going to eat this one at about the 49-yard line as he's chased down from behind by Steve Wilbur. Good pursuit by Steve Wilborn. And Mike Neal's going to roll out to his right. Excellent coverage in the secondary. He just doesn't have anybody open. Another one of those coverage sacks, as we call it. Good coverage downfield. Shudell chatting with the troops. Harrison is on to punt for Ball State. Green back in single safety. Beautiful high spiral. And Green elects to try and run it upfield. Gets to about the 19-yard line where he is finally wrapped up. And we'll take a break here with 8.51 left to go before the intermission. 6-0, Ball State on top. Denny Schreiner along with Reggie Rucker and Michael Ragai here from Ball State Stadium on the campus of Ball State University as the Cardinals lead 6 to nothing in this one. It hasn't exactly been an offensive show. No, Ball State's, well, let's start with Bowling Green first because their troubles continue too at the quarterback position. You can't get a play out of this position. And until they do, they're going to be one, two, three, and out. 
And between Brian McClure and Rich Dakin over the last eight to ten years, they've had a number of big plays by the quarterback. And once again, it's Guchardo to Slaychik. That's been really the only positive for BG here today. That was a good pass and a very long pass by Guchardo. And I think what you need, what he needs to do now is continue on that, build upon that, continue to throw the short intermediate or, or medium route passes that uh, are easy completions and builds up his confidence. Slaychik, number 84, at six feet five inches tall, has a huge advantage on the Ball State defensive backs. And for Mark Slaychik, that's reception number 15 on the season. He has two here today, ranking him high in the MAC stats. On the delay, caught in the backfield, little or no gain. Sean Turner turning in an excellent play out of the secondary. See, I think that's what that's what happens, uh, is, or is happening to the Bowling Green team. You'll have Guchardo make a play, and then they'll go right back to being predictable. They go right back to trying to run this football. And everybody is in the backfield knowing that Leroy Smith is going to get the football. Go ahead and pass the ball two or three times in a row if you have to. Let's change up the pattern here. Second down and 12 with 8.14 left to go in the opening half. Both teams are having problems on the season, putting points on the board. We're seeing that once again here this afternoon. Guchardo under heavy pressure has to look quickly and he's going to be sacked back at about the 20 yard line. Toby Beagle in on the play along with about three or four other Cardinal defenders. Well a team like this can't afford to get into a hole on first down and that's what happened with that first down play. Now they come back obvious pass situation. Everybody knows it. Here comes the rush. You see number 87 Henry Hall making the play. And rather than just put that one up for grabs again, Guchardo at least ate the football, and they'll come back now with third and 20. Another indication of the quickness of those outside linebackers, Toby Beagle, number 46, and Henry Hall, number 87. And number nine on the season as far as quarterback sacks are concerned. Dave Hankins in motion on third and a bundle. And Smith gets it on the running play out to about the 25-yard line. So it's time to bring Chris Shale back in and hope that he can kick the ball far enough downfield where the defense can come back on the field. Well, Shale really needs to get some hang time on his kicks. Now, he's look at his average, 55.5, but there's been a very good return. So the net on that is probably less impressive. So I would think that if Shale is going to help this football team this in this situation, get the ball up in the air. Keith Hackett back to receive the punt. Last week, Shale had a 76-yarder. That's better. Oh Look at that. Look at that punt. Hackett backed all the way up to about the 12-yard line. Has some running room. Finally tackled at about the 24. But that was a howitzer that just simply would not come down. Pat Jackson in on the special teams play. I was watching Shale after that punt. He came. He ran about 25 yards. And, I mean, he jumped up into the air so high because he had 4.5 seconds hang time. And what was the length? Well, it's got to be at least 60 or more. We're waiting here to find out statistically how long that punt was. 64 yards from the time it left his foot until Hackett ran it down. You can believe there are some people salivating in the NFL about a guy that can punt the football that far. Now, well, now we've talked about putting Ball State in that long field position. That's what they've done here. Now you give your defense a chance to operate and to do some things. Croom running close to the ground out near the 34-yard line. So an excellent pickup on that first down play. Of course, that play right there by Ball State just defeated everything that you did uh, from a kicking game standpoint because they allow Croom to punch it through right through the middle of the defense for nine yards. Second down and one, six. Oh, seven left to go here in quarter number two in case you've just joined us. He's... He's Kenny Stucker with two field goals has Ball State on top, six to nothing. He's just playing football, second and inches. You can do a lot of things with this. That's not one of them I would do. <laughs> Crew comes right back and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. May have a first down, but it'll be close. See, when you got second and inches, I mean, let's do something. Let's take some chances. Let's look for a big play because you got a sure first down. If you don't make it on second down, you come back third and inches and pick it up. I think this is a wasted down in football today, and teams don't do enough of it. Interesting thing that I read, Coach Paul Shudell mentioned, you know, thus far this year, our longest offensive drive has been four minutes and 19 seconds. We need to hang on to the ball longer to keep our defense off the field. Maybe that's what he's thinking. First down and 10. 
New rolls out, sets up, plenty of time to throw, and he hits his tight end, Frank Barnes, and that's more than enough for a first down. Frank Barnes, number 85, 6'4", and 235 pounds, known mostly as a good blocker, but the play action here by New holds everybody, and Barnes gets behind and outside the linebackers. Good catch there. Mike Lejeur, number 88, blocking for him, helping out his buddy. Got him an extra three or four yards without question. That seal block, the one that we saw Rucker use so many times <laughs> in the National Football League. Helping out my buddies. <laughs> yeah. Well, back to pass, setting up the screen. Oh, my, what a defensive play turned in that time by Paul Harris, who smelled out the screen from the get-go. And see, it's the quarterback. It's all in the quarterback, the defensive lineman, read the quarterback he doesn't sell this play effective enough see now they know he isn't going to throw the football because that's a different drop than the one he takes when he's actually going to throw the football downfield those linebackers are the guys that get in there and make the play loss of five on the first down play so it's second now and 15 under five minutes to go here before halftime Delay puts his head down, crosses the 45, and Dwayne Crenshaw in on the tackle. The other thing about the Ball State offense that is that it has lacked consistency, whether it be through penalty, mental error, drop balls. They'll get something going, and then they'll just have a bad play. You got to throw those bad plays out of the drive sequence, and then you're able to move the football and hold it if you're looking for possession time. Third down and 13, as there you see an update, the Wolverines on top of the Terrapins, and Virginia, what a good football team they have, leading William and Mary. Long snap count, New sets up, now he rolls right, has plenty of time to look. Now makes the throw, and a terrific catch by Cameron Lyman again. Simply plucked that one out of midair, Reggie. Yeah, Mike New was very close to uh, the line of scrimmage when he threw that football. I think he was able, and looking for Cameron Lyman at the same time, just feel his way for the line of scrimmage and get this thing in just under the gun. See, now he's very close to the line of scrimmage, but throws the football back, and an uh, excellent catch by Cameron Lyman, who goes high into the air. Watch Travis Moore, number three. He's going to be running... He could catch a cold, he's so open. Oh my. Travis is saying, come on, come on, get me the ball, but obviously New never saw him. Oh, well, New was thinking about some other things. Yep, he had a few people <laughs> chasing him, but he did get the first down. Kroom on the first down carry across the 30 before he's hit there by Terry Wilson. Well, plenty of time left, 3.17 clock rolling here before halftime, and this is about the best sustained drive that Ball State's put together. Yeah, they're looking pretty good here because you, when you keep drives going, usually somebody has made an outstanding play, whether it be by a catch or a run or something, and we have seen a couple of those on this drive already. Consequently, Ball State is maintaining possession time. Second down play. Mike New has made some excellent decisions thus far in this one. Steps up, pump fake. Chased out of the pocket and simply throws this one away. So the freshman redshirt quarterback makes a pretty good decision there. Yeah, there are a couple of heady things I've seen Mike New make already. And, you know, quarterbacks always seem to have that sixth sense. They seem to know when someone is breathing down the bat. And uh, Mike New was all set to throw that football. Then suddenly he just took off rolling because he felt someone about to sack him. Third down and seven. And uh, let's see, would it be, what, 37, 47 yards if they would try a field goal? So within Stucker's range, but I'm sure they'd like to chip away and get a little more yardage here. Well, they're going into a slight breeze, and they're right on it. So I would think that maybe they'll look for something just to add a three, four, five more yards. Little shuttle play to Parmele, who is belted out of bounds right at the 30-yard line. That play very slow in developing. Well, I'm sure that Paul Shudell was watching what we were watching in the pregame warm-ups when Kenny Stucker was kicking into the wind about 46, 47 yards. They wanted to get another yard or two here to put him right on that mark. There's the shovel pass, and uh, this ball is played very well by Mike Hacks, number 15. 
So it'll be basically a 47 yard attempt. Sucker's already hit a 48 yarder, but that with the breeze. A lot of leg. This one would have been good from 50 yards, and Stucker, Reggie Rucker, is three for three in the field goal department. And now we'll pause for this local break. Stucker, three for three, as Ball State leads 9-0 on the MAC Sports Channel Game of the Week. Let's take another look at this, because this is into a slight breeze from 47 yards, and this ball would have been good from... I think 55. You know, we talked about the professional potential of Bernie Parmalee and, of course, uh, Christian. Well, yeah. But Billy Horn, the big guy from uh -huh. uh, uh, Bowling Green. But this might be a football game in which the two biggest prospects are kickers. Stucker for Ball State and, of course, Chris Shell for Bowling Green. Well, Shell's punted three times. His average is near 60 yards. And Stucker's three for three. And wow. And that's a major league mistake at the 10-yard line as Bobby Green was bumped from behind. Well, two guys were both anxious to carry the football, and they ran into each other. And, of course, when the knee goes down, you're dead. The ball is dead. Hankins in a collision. And so Ball State has their defense on the field, and BG does not have good field position. Lack of communication. Of course, sometimes when that situation arises, one guy usually says to the other guy, me, 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 or you, you, you. And uh, I don't know what they were saying. Mm -hmm. There you see what we have on tap in our halftime show here from Ball State Stadium and Ball State University. Leroy Smith. A little more power shown by Leroy this season, but uh, not much operating room as he gains about four. No, I don't think that's going to do the job right there. I think Ball State would be content to see Bowling Green run that type of play all day long. Well, the one thing you have to look at, too, though, Reggie, is the fact that BG's defense has really kind of hung in there. They've given up three three field goals, but uh, Ball State is still yet to score on them. Well, that's all you can ask of your defense, to just keep you in the football game. But I think uh, another field goal, and I think even the defense at Bowling Green will start to wear down. Pichardo with the quick out pattern. And that pass incomplete, intended for Alan Smith, Keith Hackett out there on the coverage. Ball was high, it wasn't even catchable. Secondary here at Ball State is a pretty good unit. They've got some experienced people, got some hitters, and uh, it's just a quality unit, and they're playing very well today. Under two minutes to go now before halftime, and it's third down and six. Bowling Green's longest drive consumed eight plays. They've really not been able to move the football. Big play for Bowling Green here. If they don't make something here, Ball State's going to get excellent field position. Wow. Chardo hit all the way back at about the one-yard line. He was looking upfield, and then out of nowhere, Denny Thompson just slammed him to the turf, and Shale's going to have trouble kicking out of the end zone. You know that sixth sense I talked about? Well, Guchardo didn't have it right there. You never want to hold the football down in this area. If anything, you can't salvage anything at this point. You just got to get rid of the football and punt the ball away. And Denny Thompson there makes a big time play for Ball State. And they're going to have an opportunity to put some more points on the board before halftime. Shale back, counting the number of players on the offensive team. As we mentioned, he's averaging nearly 60 yards a punt here today. There you see, 58.3. And Reggie, you've seen a lot of great kickers in the National Football League. How does he stack up? Well, the best I've seen have been uh, Ray Guy and of the uh, Raiders and, of course, Gerald Wilson, who played forever for Kansas City. And right now, based upon what I've seen from Chris Shell, he has both of uh, what they had, length and hang time. Gerald Wilson was phenomenal for hang time. And, of course, Ray Guy had length. This guy has them both. Keith Hackett back to return the punt, and he's had uh, an opportunity to run a few back here this afternoon. Shale obviously pacing back near the end line. Not much room to operate as the ball is spotted on about the two. I would wonder if Ball State would not try to block this. Normally, a punter likes 15 yards to get the punt off. Shale only has 10. to get it away quickly, and he does. Oh, wow. 
And this one drives Hackett back to the 30-yard line. He's got 30 yards of running room, though. <laughs> and he's finally pulled down at about the 38-yard line. But, you know, you, you have to be very careful about that sort of thing. It looks good, and the stats will show up, but he is actually out kicking the coverage. And if you don't get hang time on a punt like that, then it doesn't serve you a lot to kick it that far. Ball goes, I don't know, my math isn't that good. It's 60-some yards, I know that. But the uh, return here by Hackett is about 25 yards. So the net is probably about 25 yards. All right, 68 yards in the air, but you're right, he does not kick the coverage on a regular basis. However, when you're kicking from your end zone, that's when you want to try and boom it. Yeah, well, you want to get rid of it quickly, too. 122 left to go here before the end of the second quarter, and uh, the Cardinals would like three more, maybe even a touchdown, if that's a possibility. Draw play to Parmalee. That one well sniffed out, and he's tackled at about the 46-yard line. Crenshaw in on the tackle. Well, you know, I've never been in a football game where the feature attraction so far has been one kicker versus the other, Shell and Stucker, and I'm enjoying it. Both of them have performed beautifully here in this first half. I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with the way New has handled things thus far as well. His first collegiate start now chased out of bounds. Well, I think the Bowling Green defense is a lot better than anybody thought it would be because Mike New hasn't really had a lot of time to sit back there in the pocket. The Bowling Green team, defensive team, has forced him out of the pocket a lot. They're getting good pressure, but uh, he's a big, tall, mobile guy who's able to run the football, so uh, they haven't been able to sack him a lot. You know, we haven't talked at all about Scott Hammersley, who started the first three games for Ball State, a player who basically came up through the system and uh, got his opportunity this year but wasn't able to hang on to the starting job. Well, you know, we talked with uh, Paul Shudell, and who said that, and I like for my guys to come up through the system. There's Hammersley, they're number 11, and Hammersley was a guy who sat on the bench behind David Riley, and when his turn came, uh, you know, Shudell gave it to him, but he just hasn't been able to capitalize on the opportunity. So you go to Mike New, and you can see the difference between the two quarterbacks. New is a six foot four athlete who has a good arm and running ability, and I think has a bright future at Ball State. Hammersley at six feet, about 175 pounds, is a junior. Interestingly enough, both of those players come from Indianapolis, and uh, there you see on the other sideline, Mo Ankney talking to his defensive coordinator, trying to shore up the troops, and if he headed into the locker room trailing nine to nothing, he'd probably feel pretty good about that at this stage. I would say he would. If he can get out of here without giving up three more, uh, I think his outfit has done a very good job. Central Michigan still on top, but the Redskins have scored up there in Mount Pleasant, 17 to 7 now, just before halftime. Not surprised at all by this one. Ohio University comes up with their first win a week ago. They have Toledo at home, and that's a dandy of a ball game down there. Eastern Michigan uh, trailing by 17 in the first quarter to the University of Indiana. I think Ball State has to get the football another 10 yards down the field before Stucker is able to do anything with it. Well, New slipped, ran out of trouble, and this one is picked off in the secondary. It's the second time this afternoon that New has thrown an interception. Terry Wilson comes up with the big play. And when you have a freshman quarterback, you're going to have to live with some injudicious decisions, and that's what that was then. Mike New probably should have thrown the football away or perhaps run for whatever yardage he could get. You don't want to give the football back when you have a guy like Kenny Stucker who can get you three more points. Let's take a look at see what happens. There's a breakdown, really, in, in terms of uh, the protection. And there's that sidearm throw again, and the ball just doesn't have the tight spiral nor the velocity on it that you want. Terry Wilson picking it off. Second career interception for Wilson. Guchardo with about a five-step drop. He's going for it all, and this one is broken up at about the 35-yard line. Second down now and 10. That one intended for Leroy Smith out of the backfield. You know, if Bowling Green can get something on the board, if they can get three points and, and leave this half trailing by six, with the way their offense has played, they got to feel that uh, it's a miracle for the game to be as tight as it is. Ball State defense ranked fourth overall in the Mid-American Conference is uh, pitching a shutout thus far in this one. 
Four man rush. Cuchardo again looks for the fly pattern. Now he runs out of trouble and he's going to be pulled down from behind by Toby Beagle in about the 46 yard line as BG calls for a quick timeout. You had a chance to see that excellent speed that we talked about with the Ball State outside linebackers. Toby Beagle, number 46. You know Guchardo is only 5'10", about 160 pounds, so he better be quick. But watch number 46, Beagle, just runs him down from behind. Makes a big play there, Toby Beagle. Beagle with eight career sacks. Obviously a player that uh, can get out and get on the move. He's got five sacks this year. Yeah, Toby Beagle is about 200 pounds, so, you know, very undersized for the position, but very, very quick. So 20 seconds left here before halftime. It's 9-0. Ball stayed on top, courtesy of three Kenny Stucker field goals as uh, Guchardo trots back to the huddle on this third down and nine call. You know, Bowling Green lived the last four years with those two excellent wide receivers, Hurd and uh, Thornton, but a lot of people don't talk a lot about the tight end, Kyle Huckman. Huckman that was there and who was the inside guy that kept the pressure off those two outside people. And I think they're lacking that this year. They just don't have the guy to catch the football inside to uh, pick up these first downs in a situation such as this. Well, their tight ends, Pat Jackson and Brett Landman, have seven catches between them now through the better part of three and a half games. Third down and nine, trying to hang on to the football. Nonchalant play action, and this pass intended for Mark Slaychik is incomplete, and so he brings up fourth down. Slaychik was there, but the pass was too tall. Incomplete. Well, we'll have to wonder whether or not we'll see Guchardo starting here in the second half. Uh, I, I tell you what, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised either because they have gotten nothing with Guchardo in here, and. Uh, they're running out of time. They got one more half to get something going, and we'll see Shale again. Almost not enough room for Shale here as he kicks it from about his 35. Hackett just lets it hit, and that will go into the books as a 65 yarder or more. He's averaging better than 60 yards a kick here this afternoon, Reggie. Well, he's uh, increasing his stock for the NFL draft. That's what he's doing. You were talking about the fact that when he goes and kicks from the combine, that, of course, is indoors. He'll be booming that thing all day. Yeah, it's just down the road here at the Hoosier Dome. I think that's what they call it, isn't it? Mm hmm Yeah. Seven seconds left. Just a slight breeze, overcast skies. And a 9 nothing football game thus far for Ball State. Neither team scored a touchdown. Now, if you're looking for excitement, we haven't seen a whole lot of it yet in this one. This has been a defensive game and a battle of kickers. Well, new, the obvious choice there. We'll down it and let the clock run out. So, Reggie, I think you basically assessed this one correctly. It's been a game thus far dominated by the kicker, Shale the punter, and the place kicker, Kenny Stucker, who's three for three. He's taken advantage every time they've given him a chance. Well, Denny, there's some people that are sitting at home watching this. They love this kind of football game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you want to see the big hits and the, and the, the, the top defensive plays, but I think we're, we're really being treated to extra, two extraordinary young players here in Chris Shell and Kenny Stucker who do what they do extremely well. All right, let's head down to the sidelines now. Michael Ragai has head coach Paul Shudell. That's right, Denny. Paul, you have to be very impressed with uh, with Mike New. He steps in, uh, made a couple bad reads, but uh, ran your offense very, very effectively in the first half. Well, he's done a good job with it, and, he, and we've, we're and we starting to play football like we're a little more capable. We haven't got the touchdowns that we'd like, but Bowling Green has an excellent defense, which has a lot to do with that. But we're very pleased with that, and we just want to come out second half and settle down and just keep going. Chris Shale of Bowling Green, a tremendous punter with a great legs, kind of backed you up a few times. We want to check him to see if he's bionic or not, because <laughs> he is one of the best punters that I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of him in my days, but he consistently with the win or against the win is just outstanding, and which is keep him in, in field position in this football game. All right, Paul, best to you in the second All half. Right, thank you very All much. Right. Paul Shudell, head coach of the Ball State uh, Cardinals. He's got Kenny Stucker, and that's basically all that needs to be said. Nine nothing, his cards on top as we're going to go to halftime. Stick with us. We're coming back with a lot more of halftime activity. Sports Channel Mac Game of the Week. Before we go to break, let's send it back to Denny and Reggie. Guys? All right, Michael, you better talk to both of those offensive coordinators as well. Perhaps set up some passing game in the second can have. We'll be back with more of the festivities here from Ball State. Our score, 9 nothing. 
And welcome back. Our halftime score, Ball State leading Bowling Green 9-0. Kenny Stucker with three field goals from 29, 47, and 48 yards. That's the difference in this one. Yeah, and Ball State's going to get the football to start the second half, and I think you have to make a statement in the early moments of the second half. It sometimes sets the pace for the rest of the football game. There you see the two teams uh, playing here this afternoon in Muncie. Toledo trailing right now, 3 to nothing to Ohio University. Eastern Michigan playing at Indiana, and Central winning over Miami. So at the end of the day, Central could end up 2-0. and Toledo will we'll have to wait and see. And we were in Western Michigan last week, and they have a fine football team. A good look at the standings as uh, that's Todd Powell, he'll start the second half here by kicking off from the 35 as the Cardinals get the football to start the third quarter. Well, you know, because they have no points, we've been talking about Bowling Green's offense uh, maybe a little bit more than we have about Ball State, but they haven't really done a whole lot themselves. I mean, the three field goals have come as a result of Kenny Stucker's leg, and they haven't really put any big plays on the board. Excellent crowd on hand as it's Parents' Day this afternoon here at Ball State Stadium. Powell ready to start quarter number three. Travis Moore back deep for the Ball State Cardinals. I think you have to be looking to make a turnover if you're bowling green. This is an opportunity to stop Ball State and get the football in there into the uh, fit football field. Moore starts about five yards deep, and he's going to bring it out. A little hesitation there. Yep, spins off one would-be tackler and ends up at about the 18-yard line. Coverage teams judge the quality of their coverage play by where the offense puts the ball in motion. Anytime you can stop them 20-yard line or in, man, you've done a great job. Dal McDonald in on the tackle. As there you see, Ball State starting from their 18-yard line. Had excellent field position throughout most of the first half. Yeah, that's what I said. I mean, Ball State hasn't done a whole lot. They can't shout a whole lot either. Well, you heard Paul Shudell right at the end of the first half saying, you know, we've gotten some field goals, but we really need to try and punch in a couple of touchdowns. Parmalee, off right tackle, a slow developing play, and he's tackled from behind at about the 19-yard line. Keith Pace in on the stop. Yeah, and also uh, Dwayne Quintra caught in from behind, but that's good neutralizing play at the line of scrimmage, and uh, then you get those linebacks coming up from behind. Parmalee should have taken that ball and gone and burst through the line of scrimmage. It was almost reading the defense to yeah. find out where he could run. But he runs like that. He does that a lot. And I think you can make some tackles on him if you come up from behind him. If you'll just go all out, you can get him from behind. All right. Second down now in nine. Lyman was in motion. Now Parmalee cuts back across the 20 to about the 22 where Crenshaw catches up with it. See, what's missing for both of these offensive teams really is the threat of a vertical passing game. And without that threat, linebackers, safeties, hang around the line of scrimmage, and you have five to six people blocking, and the defense is putting eight and nine men up around the line of scrimmage, so you have sometimes two and three people unaccounted for. Runners can't get through unblocked tacklers. Third down and six for Mike New and company. Opening series here of quarter number three. New rolls to his left, plenty of time to look up field. Now he stops, sets his feet. Throws a side armor, and it's pulled down for the second time this afternoon by the tight end, Frank Barnes. Excellent play by Mike New, because when he stopped and turned back, he realized, I've got to take something off of this football. And he lofted that football so that Frank Barnes could catch it. Okay, now watch. You're going to see the rollout, and everything is practically covered well by Bowling Green. Now watch. He stops. You see number 85, Frank Barnes. Watch him just toss it to it. Yeah, that's easy to catch. Barnes... Uh, juggled that just a little bit. It's a good thing he didn't drill that. Nice reroute that time by Barnes as well. Mm -hmm. New his quarterback was in trouble and just got to the open part of the field. That's called uncovering. Play action. New sets up shop again. Hits Barnes across midfield and the load is down to about the 45. Well, he learned something on that last play because he realizes that, well, let me do what's safe. You know, I'm setting up. Barnes is just settling down out there about six, seven yards. It's an easy throw, an easy pass to catch, and it turns into a bigger play. There's New. See, watch. Just a short pass. Barnes standing out there all alone. Now, Bowling Green is going to have to now start focusing some attention on Frank Barnes because they have been leaving him alone too much now. And 
Ball State's taking advantage of it. Terry Wilson in on the tackle. First and ten for the Cardinals, who are moving from their 18-yard line across midfield. Parmalee on the pitch, runs through one tackler, and is finally wrapped up at about the 41-yard line by Keith Pace. It's Parmalee with that style that we've talked about, how he just sort of cruises along the line of scrimmage looking for an opening, and then he wants to burst through. You see it right there, just... Couldn't quite make it through, but it's a good place. Keith Pace makes the tackle. But now you see a little bit of uh, about uh, a little bit of balance from Ball State, throwing a couple of times, running mm -hmm. a couple of times. Defense back on their heels a little bit. Exactly. Second down now and six, as this is the opening drive of the third quarter. Ball State leads in this one, nine to nothing. In case you've just joined us. Parmalee the quick pitch hurdles one would-be tackler inside the 40 to about the 36-yard line. Well, at the point of attack, okay, that's where the block occurs to spring a back through the line. We're seeing a little crisper blocking now from Ball State. Now watch this play where Parmley just drives through. You see number 85, Frank Barnes. He seals off the inside so that that back can get through that hole untouched. Dave Bolinski from the ball, or I should say Bowling Green secondary, comes up to make the tackle, and it's now third down and two. This time it's Crew with a big hole. He's into the secondary, down to about the 25-yard line. There's nothing difficult about this game if you'll execute. That time I was watching number 53, Todd Wright, who's a first-team All-Mid-American Conference guard. And it's his block that just walls off this entire play here. Number 53, you saw the block back there. That sprung Kroon right through the hole. It was a gigantic hole, and that's the way you play football, block and tackle. First down and 10 now. Ball State in an excellent position to put more points on the board. They've yet to score a touchdown in this one. Parmalee starts left. Kicks in the afterburners and is tackled at about the 20-yard line. In on the tackle once again, Dave Belinsky. But then again, it was Todd Wright, number 53. The All-Mid-American Conference player leading Parmley. Watch number 53. Here's Parmley. He's waiting on Wright to make the block. There's the block. And then Parmley just with a stutter step picks up about four or five yards. Good five yards. Belinsky just hanging on for dear life. Mm -hmm. If he hadn't, uh, Bernie might have been off to the races. Second down and six, the most impressive drive thus far for Ball State. A couple of big catches by Frank Barnes, the difference thus far in this drive. Pitch back to Kroom, tries the left side and hit basically in about the line of scrimmage by Mark Ross. Ball State was trying that toss pitch action into the short side of the field, hoping to catch Bowling Green shifted to the strong side and the wide side of the field, but Bowling Green pursued very well on that play. Only a yard pickup. Right now, if you're Paul Schudel, you're already figuring, well, we've got three with Stucker. Let's see if we can come up with a touchdown. Yeah, well, he knows that uh, if right now they're going to have to, Bowling Green is going to have to score twice to beat him anyway, so anything he can put up now is icing on the cake. Good sustained drive, but it's third down and five now. New rolls right, chased out of the pocket, oh, slips wow. and falls at the 35-yard line. And the majority of the pressure that time provided by Dal McDonald, one of the inside linebackers. Every now and then, you've got to get a big play out of defense. Now, Ball State had beaten Bowling Green down the field. Now, watch number 93 coming from the right side. Dal McDonald comes up, forces New to switch directions. New slips, and that's a big, big play for Bowling Green. Well, Ball State quickly onto the field, and it looks as if Stucker is going to punt. Probably want one of those little short pooch kicks that doesn't go very far. Yep. Fair catch signaled for, and this one batted out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Nice play as we'll take a break here. To go in quarter number three, Ball State leading Bowling Green 9-0 on the MAC Sports Channel Game of the Week. First offensive series for BG here in quarter number three, and Pat Guchardo remains the quarterback for the Falcons. This was four of ten in the first half, and uh, I want to see how long Mo Ankeny goes with Guchardo before he goes to a relief pitcher. 
Four of ten for about 55 yards and one interception in the first half of play. Not going to get it done. Fake play action and a long pass. They got a Is there interference? No. Oh, my. Oh, wow. Alan Smith was double covered, knocked to the ground, and there was no foul. I saw too much contact there for, for me. Watch the left side of your screen. Well, we can't tell because of the, well, Keith Hackett has appeared to bump into Alan Smith just before the ball arrived. Mo Ankney pleading for someone to see it the way we saw it. Didn't get any breaks oh, when you're not doing it. Well. Nice fake that time to Smith into the line, and oh my, his counterpart Alan Smith was running a post pattern, but the play goes for not. And Leroy Smith hit it about the. say they've come up with a fumble, but apparently the play was blown dead. The ball, Bowling Green has just got no blocking. I mean, Leroy Smith is getting the football, and there are three, four red shirts in his face before he takes a step. That is just poor execution, and you aren't going to win any football games if the people up front, those five interior guys, don't start pushing the defense back off the line of scrimmage. Third down and nine. Pressure situation right now for Guchardi, or Guchardo, rather, and Bowling Green. Tough to operate back here. Hit while he throws it. Pass is deflected. It was intended for Pat Jackson, and that was a costly play. And Guchardo gets up. He is really hurt. Blaine Bishop, number 22 for Ball State, is on a corner black blitz. Guchardo doesn't expect the corner to be coming, but watch. Flashing from the right side of your screen. There's number 22, Blaine Bishop, who hits Guchardo as he releases the football. They're fortunate that that ball wasn't picked off. Shale into punt. Some impressive numbers here this afternoon. See, he should take a little bit off of the length here and kick this ball higher. End over end. Hackett lets it hit. And it takes a favorable BG bounce. Pat Jackson down on the coverage. And the tackle is made at about the 37-yard line. You can live with that kind of punt because there's no appreciable return. Well, considering that the ball was at the nine yard line and now Ball State sets up first down and 10 at about the 38. That was a positive punt. Huh? It wasn't a thing of beauty, but it got the job done. But once again, Bowling Green's defense is back out on the field and these guys have played well. A gutsy performance, yeah. but how long can you stay out there? Yeah, I mean, sooner or later, you're right. Sooner or later, when you're out there, you are exposed as much as they have been. Something breaks down, and, and the opponent gets a, a long play or even a touchdown. But these guys have been very impressive today. Kroom, after bobbling the handoff, gets back to near the line of scrimmage. Good defensive surge that time. Gain of literally nothing on that first down play. Got to be frustrating for the offense, though, at Bowling Green, realizing they just haven't been able to put anything together here over the last couple of weeks. Well, and, and uh, Ball State knows that and has tailored its game plan to suit the deficiencies of Bowling Green. I mean, they're just content right here to keep the ball in play, let the clock run, and uh, let the lead stand up. Sure, run as many plays as you possibly can. They lead nine to nothing. Three Kenny Stucker field goals. New fumbles the snap, picks it up. And the pass is partially deflected. That play had problems from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, he dropped the football and uh, was had the presence of mind to pick it up quickly enough, but bounce one. <laughs> Last week when he was inserted in the third quarter against Toledo, Mike New fumbled two snaps from center. Well, yeah, when you come in and, and you haven't been accustomed to playing, and usually what you've been working with on the second team has been the second team center. Now you work with the first team center and you don't have that uh, communication that you normally have. Third down and nine, BG defense trying to get the football back for their offense with decent field position. Pressure is on, New steps up, throws it over the middle, and this one is intercepted once again by Carlos Brooks at the 42. Second interception for him on the day. Third interception thrown by Mike New. Carlos Brooks just has good man-to-man -man coverage to begin with. Now, the reason why this ball is picked off is because the pressure 
gets to Mike New. He panics a little bit because he sees Dwayne Crenshaw, number 50, in his face. And, of course, there's Carlos Brooks stepping in front again. Cameron Lyman was the intended receiver that time, but I'll tell you, Carlos Brooks had him well covered. Here's another look at it. Defensive backs aren't normally noted for being able to catch that well, but Brooks did a good job. First time we've seen freshman George Johnson at the tailback position as uh, there you see Carlos Brooks. He's had a big day in the secondary. But, uh, you know, Carlos Brooks gives him an opportunity here. Guchardo and company have to do something with it. You can't sometimes just come back after a big turnaround like that. You got the emotion going your way. Don't run the ball into the line. Let's go for it. Let's, let's look for the big play. Let's throw the football down the field. And heck, if BG would score a touchdown, they'd be right back in the thick of this thing. It's only 9 That's still a ball game. Sure. Second down and nine. Guchardo with the play action. Tries the sideline route intended for Slachik, who was double double covered out there, and uh, not much room. Now, see, that's the only pattern that Bowling Green has run when they have thrown the football downfield. It has been that type of pass to Slachik. What they need to do is come back off of that and bring the ball inside. I have not seen enough patterns inside. It's an easier pass to throw. Uh, and I think it, there's a lot of room in there. Key question is how long can Ankney go with Cuchardo, who really hasn't generated much on offense. Third down, trying to keep the drive alive. Nice pass here. Finally, Jackson, the tight end, comes up with a catch. He's been silent all day. Knocked out of bounds at the 39 by Robert Glover, but it's enough for the first down. Yeah, essentially the same type of pattern they have been running. They're just using different people. This time, Guchardo sends Slachik down and brings him over the middle, and he runs Jackson from the outside, from the inside to the out. Good play. Little body slam there out of bounds, yeah. huh? <laughs> Robert Glover with a big-time tackle. Jackson's first reception on the day. Under six minutes to play here in the third quarter, and BG with their second sustained drive. Oh, my. That was almost picked off from the get-go by Blaine Bishop, who read the quarterback's eyes, obviously. Blaine Bishop has been very impressive. Not listed as a starter, but he's had a lot of playing time today and has come up with some big plays on defense. He just looks like one of those guys that is able to make big plays defensively. Guchardo nearly threw that one right to Bishop, and if he'd have picked that one off, he'd have been off to the races. Central Michigan thumping Miami of Ohio right now. And there you see the turnaround. Toledo leading 13 to 6 in the third quarter. Indiana at halftime still over Eastern Michigan. A big win for Toledo if they beat Ohio U on the road. Fake pitch. Guchardo hitting the backfield. Let's it go anyway. Pass was intended for Jackson, but Henry Hall was in his face. I tell you, this little guy, Guchardo, at 5'10", 160 pounds, and I doubt if he weighs that. He has a lot of courage. He knows he's going to get hit. He's been hit on almost every play, and yet he is still able to hit this ball. He leaves himself completely unprotected and does get the football away, saving a about 10 yards and lost. Too bad Jackson was wide open on the play, but Henry Hall came in virtually unblocked. Third down now and 10. Here comes a blitz. Blitz is on, picked up momentarily. Guchardo's hit, he coughs up the football. That could be the difference in this one. Ball State with all of the pressure. Hackett comes away with the big turnover. Well, I'm not surprised at that because the pressure was becoming very intense. They were building and building and building to something. And finally, this is an all-out blitz. I mean, Ball State sends everybody. There's only two people in the secondary. They're one-on-one -on -one covers. There are about nine players who are in that backfield and it worked to perfection for Ball State. Well, you can see Guchardo right at the last moment trying to get the football away, but uh, just smothered under, and then he coughed it up. So Ball State with the football now on Bowling Green's 47. Marmalade on the pitch, halfback option, down the field it goes, and a perfect catch pulled in by Cameron. Well, all day long, there were a lot of linebackers
receivers and a lot of safeties up around the line of scrimmage. Now, one thing, partly if you look at him, he normally starts his run style that way. Looks like he's cruising. And then, of course, Cameron Lyman, who's made a couple of big plays already, gets behind the secondary of Bowling Green. And this is the big play perhaps Ball State has been looking for. We told you Parmalee could run the football and catch it. Now we know he can throw it, too. <laughs> Lyman inside the 10, and Ball State really trying to apply the vice grips here in the third quarter. Croom off left tackle, running hard inside the five, down to about the four-yard line where Terry Wilson's in on the tackle. Straight power play right up the middle. I don't think we'll see anything fancy from here on in, do you? No, we haven't seen anything fancy all day except for that halfback option pass, which was successful. Those are the kinds of plays during the course of the year when you look back and you say, how many times did we run this? You probably ran it three times all year, and if it was successful too, then you know you probably won a football game. Yep, and you keep it in the playbook as well, huh? Mm -hmm. Kroom starts inside, goes outside, goes into the end zone, untouched, or make that parmalee, I should say, not Kroom. You know, when he started sprinting out there with that burst of speed, I know it was parmalee. Whatever, whether it's Kroom or parmalee, <laughs> it's a touchdown, Reggie Rucker, and it's now 15 to nothing. Ball State on top and in control. Definitely in control, uh, and that's mostly because Bowling Green has no production at quarterback. All right, let's take, take another look. Well-blocked play. People falling down everywhere. Pomley running into the end zone untouched. Career touchdown number 23 on the ground for Bernie Pomley. Stuck around to try the extra point. And we will now pause for this local break. All State leading 16 to nothing. 4.22 left to go here in quarter number three. You're watching the MAC Sports Channel Game of the Week. Here's the Parmalee touchdown. Take another look at it. Frank Warren, number 85, gets a good block. He seals and walls off that backside. Troy Smith, another excellent block. There is Parmalee. Got to be one of the easier touchdowns in his career. Every year. Hankins takes it at about the 22 and crosses the 25. Where BG starts first down and 10. Keith Hackett in on the tackle. With a 16-0 lead, Ball State will only be playing pass. I mean, they know that they aren't going to be beaten by a running game at this point. The only way that uh, Bowling Green can catch up in this football game is to throw the football. You're going to see an unmerciful rush on right. Duchardo. After the fumble recovery, it didn't take Ball State long to get into the end zone. The big play, Parmalee to Lyman, that uh, set up the first down and 10 inside the 10. Duchardo off the play action, waits for somebody to clear, finally hits Pat Jackson. Jackson with a nice move out to about the 41. Luchardo's arm isn't that bad. I mean, he throws the intermediate pass pretty effectively. And it's a pretty accurate throw. It's just that he can't throw the football from horizontal parade rest. You know, he needs to be able to stand up and get some protection just like this. Now, when you do this and the quarterback doesn't find anybody, then it's time to get a new quarterback. But until you can do that, then judge, you know, the jury's still out on the call. If you don't have time, it's tough to look upfield and find open receivers, I can tell you that. On the delay, Jackson hit right at the line of scrimmage for little or no gain. Let's head downfield side to Michael Reagan. Yeah, Denny and Reggie developing the Pat Gucciardo quarterback story. Mo Angley told me this week that he really doesn't want to get into this musical QB type situation. He wants a football team to understand that Gucciardo's going to be the man today, and pretty much whatever is going to uh, transpire, Gucciardo's going to be the guy that's going to stick through this football game. So I think you're going to pretty much see Pat taking this ball, Bowling Green football team for the rest of this contest. Thank you so much for that report. Little dive play this time. Surge out near the 44-yard line. I think anybody who has been around football knows that a quarterback has to be able to uh, play uh, uninhibited. He's got to be able to be out there and know that if he makes a mistake, he's not going to be yanked out of the football game because he threw an interception or missed a receiver or fumbled the football because you get a lot of chances in this game and, uh, you know, the quarterback just has to have that kind of confidence in the staff. 
All right. Third down and five. Haven't had the most success on third down conversions, have they? Fake pitch. Guchardo overthrows his intended receiver, Brett Landman. The uh, play set up pretty good, but Guchardo simply missed him. Yeah, the, the, they intended to try to get the football to Slachik on that play action pass. Slachik felt that he was open, but I'm not so sure if Guchardo at 5'9 or 5'10 can pick up receivers as well as, let's say, Mike New does, who's six foot four. Look at that. Looks like a great uh, lottery selection number-wise, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say some fellows will be want, uh, some teams will be wanting this young man. A little pressure. Hackett at the 10. Good coverage, and he is hit at about the 18-yard line, which is where Ball State starts first down at 10. Dal McDonald in on the tackle. Dal McDonald's been all over the field today. Of course, he replaced BG's leading tackler, Charles Dotson, who was injured this past week. We also have not seen Ken Barris, who was the starter at cornerback, who has not played today. Well, if you're Mike New, you have to be feeling a little more comfortable about the way things have transpired. You're ahead 16 to nothing. Your defense is playing well. And he knows all he's going to do is start handing the football off to Parmalee. Or in this case, Kenneth Rhodes, the sophomore out of Louisville, Kentucky. You know, it's interesting because I think Paul Schudel feels like last week, if a couple of calls had maybe gone the other way, his team might have been able to beat Toledo. Yeah, they have a lot of pride here. Don't forget, Ball State is the defending Mid-American Conference champion. They represented this conference in the California Raisin Bowl last year against the Big West champion, Fresno State. They didn't do very well out there, but... Uh, you know, I know they wanted to try to get back to that football game again. Well, this time it's the high-stepping Corey Crew. It's drilled at about the 22-yard line by Dave Bolinski. If you have to say one thing, though, Reggie, this BG defense has really run to the football today. Yeah, they fly to the football. They hit. They're very aggressive. Cardinal rule number one, if you're a running back, don't stop. Corey Crew does something here that... Uh, I think his running back coach would probably tell him, look, run through the tackle, young man. Don't just stop there. You've got nothing going for you if you stop. Third down and seven. Parmalee is back at the tailback position. 16 to nothing. Ball State on top in this one. Looking to go one and one in conference play. Parmalee on the delay. Fumble. Drop the football and let's see who's going to come up with it. Looks like the Cardinals perhaps are going to fall on the football. Just one of those days. Huh? That ball was into the secondary, floating free, and Tim Warady, one of the offensive guards, came up with the football. Let's see who strips the ball from Parmley. Parmley running through there straight up. Well, couldn't see who got it, but someone got him from behind. And watch number 65, Warady. Big offensive lineman and then moving people around with his body. If you're the defense, now it ends up first down and 10 as the ball is fumbled all the way out past the 30-yard line. If you're Ball State, now all you want to do is simply grind this thing out on the ground. Rhodes hit right at the 30-yard line, and he'll maybe lose a half a yard on the play. Dale McDonald, number 93, in there once again. Ooh. Rather brisk third quarter. Yeah, plenty of running plays. Obviously, Ball State wants to just keep it on the ground and run the clock. It hasn't been uh, an overly exciting game from a fan standpoint, but if you're Paul Schudel, you just want to get that first MAC victory at home and see what happens the rest of the season. We've come to the end of three quarters of play, and we'll take a break here. Ball State leading 16 to nothing on their... 16-0 as we start quarter number four here at Ball State. This telecast is presented by the authority of the Mid-American Conference and Sports Channel. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or any other use of this telecast without the prior written consent of the MAC or Sports Channel is strictly prohibited. We've got something to look forward to in this fourth quarter, but believe it or not, all right, when we get a chance, ask me what it is. All right, I will. I have a feeling I know what you're going to tell me. Okay. Second down and 11. New rolls to the right. 
being chased out of the pocket. Throws up a lame duck that's pulled down by Frank Barnes, who makes his fourth catch on the afternoon. He's been a busy tight end. Yeah, Barnes, uh, after having some trouble early on in the football game, has come through and made several big catches. Of course, uh, he's following in the footsteps of a very outstanding player here from a year ago, Eugene Riley, now with the Miami Dolphins. I think with the Miami Dolphins. All right. You want to leave us in suspense, or are you going to tell me what we're looking forward to here? Well, I think going with the win, perhaps we might get a chance to see Kenny Stucker attempt what might be an ins uh, well, a ball stake tying field goal attempt, 62 yards. Mm -hmm. John Dietrich. Croom wasted no time running north and south on that play. Not make it Parmalee, I'm sorry. Boy, those guys are giving me problems. Well, they both have nines, and they look a lot like. <laughs> yeah. One's a little bigger than the other, yeah. but uh, that's about it. But I think the way Bowling Green has played, if the Ball State offense happens to uh, bog down somewhat, then we will get a chance to see Kenny Stucker again, and I'm, and I'm sure he's standing on the sideline near the coach going, come on, coach, let me try, let me try. Stucker has already hit from 29, 48, and 47 thus far here this afternoon. You know what? I'd let him try it. Mm -hmm. First down and 10. Parmalee again off left tackle, showing some power to about the 48-yard line. That does get his hands on the football quite a few times. Yeah, that's good stepping by Parmalee. He strings you out by making you think he's going laterally, then he'll step and, and cut back. That's that cutback ability that he has. Watch this. See, watch him move laterally. Then he's just looking for an opening right along the line of scrimmage. And once he gets his body through there, he's good for four or five yards. I got a question, too. Maybe we can get an ISO of it a little bit later on. But have you seen that pad that's flapping on his back? Interesting. Let's take a look at that the next time. Second down and six. And this time it's Kroom from the tailback position. Runs through one tackle down to about the 48-yard line where he's finally pulled down by backup linebacker Doug Atkin. I think what, what you're seeing, if we can get a chance to look at the back of those jerseys, there is a pad in the back of both number 29, Corey Kroom, and number 39, Bernie Parmalee, where running backs get hit in the back a lot. And that's some protection, some extra protection inside those jerseys that will lessen the... Uh, the morning after. Mm -hmm. Bernie gets back in. Maybe we can get a, a look at that. Well, Kroom has it also. His jersey's covering it, though, more or less. Bernie's is not. Yeah, puts his head down to near the 46-yard line. Mike Hack in on the stop from the secondary. And this one's close enough that uh, they're going to take a look and measure it. Of course, next week for you and I, we're heading to the Glass City, to the Glass Bowl. Well, we've heard a lot about the new stadium. We've heard a lot about, of course, the new coach. And it appears to be a new football team. They're winning on the road now. All right, let's look at what we're trying to show you. You're going to see the jersey, and you can see something black under there. And uh, that is the extra protection, both in the jersey and in, in, in the uh, uniform. Almost looks like the back of a chair, you know, that's kind of strapped on there. Well, brings up fourth down and less than a yard. And there you see it, a little clear. I didn't want any of that stuff on. No? No. Man. No pads? You played with no pads? Yeah. I mean, you had to look pretty. Up you had to look good. You couldn't but wear you guys all that didn't have face stuff. masks or anything. Oh, get out of here. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys, did you have the leather helmets? Or did no. You with the... Oh, my. Punt is blocked and recovered at about the 41-yard line. So BG comes up with a big defensive play as Joe Bear comes up with the block. I think Moore Hinckney is very proud of his defense and his special teams and his kicker. It's just the offensive attack that just has gotten him nothing. Now let's take another look at this. There's the BG rush. Everybody is coming. Watch number four, Joe Bear. Outstretched, blocks the punt. Excellent field position. Terry Wilson recovered that number one, by the way. This is pretty good field position, and Guchardo is still a quarterback. 
He's the man for the day, apparently. Loads up, got a receiver wide open. Hankins is finally pulled down at about the 21-yard line. That's that sequence of plays that I was talking about earlier on in the ball game where Bowling Green had a turnover and then came back with, with the football and ran it right into the middle of the line. Now, Dave Hankins, number two, is the fastest of the Bowling Green receivers. He's streaking right down the middle of the field, outruns everybody, and, of course, is tackled there by Blaine Bishop who's also been in on a lot of plays. He saves a touchdown. First down and 10. Big play that time for BG. They're looking for some points of any kind here in this one. Jackson from the tailback position pulled down at about the 19-yard line by Mark Paris. I, I can't understand it. Attack. Offenses need to attack. You had an opportunity there to come back and throw the football again. Your quarterback has, has, has gotten some confidence, has hit a big play. There isn't any need to run the football in the middle of the line. How many yards have you gained today doing that? None. Let's throw the football downfield and try to get back into this football game. Still have time. And there's a flag on the play as well, a penalty against Bowling Green. Mm. Personal foul is the call, so instead of second down and 10, brings up now second down and a bundle. Dead ball, personal foul, offense. Like going up a, a sand pile, they need two steps forward and one step back. Only after the big play, they had a golden opportunity. The other point you want to make is uh, when you're throwing then on first down, the defense isn't necessarily looking for that. They've been looking right all day. That's true. That's an excellent time to throw the football on first down. You know, when it's second and 24, they have a pretty good idea what you're going to be doing. Play action. Blitz is on and hit once again from behind. Guchardo has company in the form of Blaine Bishop. Same play as the previous play with Bishop sacked Guchardo down around the one-yard line. No one accounting for the backside protection for Guchardo. Guchardo never realizes Bishop is there. It's just smart defensive strategy by Ball State. You can tell that Ball State defense wants to preserve the shutout. Well, Bishop isn't accounted for, and uh, if he's not accounted for, then he shouldn't be in the secondary. He should, he should blitz the passer. Third and 33. Pressure again, Guchardo unloads, throws it downfield, and this one is picked off in the secondary by Robert Glover, but no, they're gonna say he dropped it. Glover had it, but uh, coughed it up once he, there was a collision down there, and I think Keith Hackett came up with the football, but they ruled it incomplete. Glover had his mitts on it for a while, and so now it brings up fourth down and 33, and we see Chris Shale. You know, he punted 13 times last week against Central Michigan. Well, that pass was a prayer, though, and uh, I think you're going to see Shale trying to put the ball out of out the bounds inside the 20-yard line. All right. Low snap, but a long, high kick. No. Ends up in the end zone. So we'll take a break here with 10.46 left to go. Ball State 16, Bowling Green nothing. Game of the week. Still a shutout for the Ball State defense as they lead 16 to nothing here with 10.46 left in this one. Ask me why is it 16 to nothing. All right, Reggie, why would it be 16 to nothing at this point? I don't know. <laughs> it's an inside joke there for the viewers across the network. Interesting, interesting summation there as Ball State continues to try and grind out some yardage on the ground. Ball State, if they win this one, Reggie, go to two and two, one and one in the conference. Yeah, and uh, have a chance to to uh, defend that Mid-American Conference Championship. Uh, some of the some of the front runners are going to have to play each other in the coming weeks, and uh, you know I, I think two wins in the Mid-American might do it this year. I mean, excuse me, two losses. You can't have any more than two losses, and I think uh, of course if Bowling Green gets out of here with two losses, they can pretty much forget about it. Mm -hmm. One thing you have to keep an eye on is the fact that Toledo's winning again on the road. They've mm -hmm. got. The bulk of their MAC games at home now. This one out near the 25-yard line. Across to the 26. Dal McDonald in on the tackle. So we're going to get to know a little bit more about Toledo beginning next week. Toledo and Eastern Michigan from the Glass Bowl. 
Of course, Eastern playing out of the conference this week, but uh, the Hurons 2 and 0. Looks like maybe Toledo might be 3 and 0. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, getting all of their away games out of the way early, and they'll have the cozy confines of the Glass Bowl down the stretch. And there you see now 20 to 6 over the Bobcats. That in the third quarter. Bobcats are a tough team. They may play the role of spoilers this year. Harmony up near the 30 yard line as the senior tailback continues to run with authority. Bolinski in on the tackle. Close enough for a measurement. Well, he does have some acceleration and some power, doesn't he? Mm hmm. I'd like to know his true size and speed, though. I, I see some skills in Parmalee, but I, you know, until you get to those combine sessions where then they can actually uh, accurately tell how tall and how big a guy is and how fast he is. You won't know how uh, they evaluate him until that time. On the program, I think he was listed with 4-6 speed in the 40. And I'd say that's average for a halfback. Western Michigan at halftime trailing by seven. That, of course, on the road against Iowa State. I'd say it's just about over and not pleasant. That Central Michigan team is a good one. They have quite a program running the football and defense. Not a bad combination at the college level. Bobby Green back deep for Bowling Green. Pressure is on. Big kick here. Green takes it at the 20 with not a single blocker. And he gets drilled at about the 22-yard line. Don't forget for up to the minute sports news tuned to Sports Nightly live from our studios in New York. The Sports Nightly team gathers all the scores and inside stories to bring you one of the most comprehensive sports casts on television. That's Sports Nightly every night following our main event. We should stand corrected about the speed of Bernie Parmalee. It is 4-4-5, which okay. makes it outstanding. That, that, that's, that's a difference in a lot of money. <laughs> Is it? Oh, yes. It's the difference between going for six and getting tackled from behind. Well, it's going in the sixth round as opposed to going in the second round. Guchardo runs out of trouble and then runs out of room as he's finally pulled down at about the 25. Pickup of about three on the play. Henry Hall had a hand in on the tackle. He's been an active uh, defensive player this week. Yes, Henry Hall is one of the stalwarts up front. Good pass rusher. When you see a quarterback do this a lot, look down, start the throw, then pull it down, two things. One, coverage is outstanding, or two, the rush is coming. Well, he was a sandwich there at about the 25-yard line, too. That looked like a little bit of both happening in the same play. Mm -hmm. Second and eight. Been a long day for... Pat Cuchardo, the starting quarterback for BG. Quick out pattern. Slachik comes up with the reception. Well, he's got some sure hands. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing that you do off that, if you're looking for a big play, is you want to run that same play, same look, same formation. That's what you tell your quarterback as we watch the play again here. And pump fake right now. See, pump fake. Then let Slachik turn up the field and go. Then you got something going. This is the time in the ball game. Defenses know that their offense has to pass, and these cornerbacks and these safety people are looking to pick the ball off. So they'll go for a fake. Well, they've enjoyed watching the Sports Channel game of the week here from Ball State Stadium and Ball State University. There it is. There you see. Rucker had it diagnosed, but now Guchardo, with nobody open, becomes a running back. Boy, you were right on the money with that one. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the only problem there was that Ball State realized it, too, and they shifted to a zone defense on that side. So, so it was if you're just, a quarterback, you got to check that play off and go somewhere else. Yeah, that's what's so frustrating about the game. You figure you got this figured out. Now, there's the pump fake, and he's running Slagic deep, but see, they roll into the short side of the field. Over the middle, the pass was caught and dropped by Brent Landman. And so it'll bring up fourth down now, and BG's going to have to give the football up. Mm. Well, it's getting to be a point now, too, where they have to start thinking four down territory and, and uh, utilizing all of them. Well, I stand corrected. They had yet to flip over the yardage marker. It's third down now and eight, so there's still life in this drive. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Guchardo wants to put five people into the pass pattern, but he can't because he needs some of them to block. 
And that's the problem. There are not enough receivers. Blitz is on. Guchardo. Oh. And gets this that. One off the fingertips of Mark Slachik. And yeah, you're right. You got to come up with that play. He had some running room, too. Oh, yeah. He, he, the ball's a little bit behind him. Uh, but I think he can make that catch. And you can see Slachik, number 84. He's very disappointed with himself because anytime you get your hands on the football, you should make that kind of catch. Especially when you look upfield and you've got some operating yes. room. He could have run for 15 or 20 yards easily. Shale again. Let's see how far this one travels. Oh, line drive into the wind. Favorable bounce, though. And it rolls dead at about the 25 yard line. And we will now pause for this local break. Seven minutes left to go. Ball State leading comfortably 16 to nothing on the MAC Sports Channel Game of the Week. Well, there you see a couple of field goals in the opening quarter and then one more in the second, a touchdown in the third, and BG is yet to come up with any points. And they don't have the football, so they won't be getting any right now either. Not unless something dramatic happens. The defense should be commended today for Bowling Green. They've kind of hung right in there. Created some turnovers. Mike New could have run for the first down. Instead, he throws a pass a little bit behind Frank Barnes, who couldn't come up with a play. Barnes was all by his lonesome, too. Yeah, Barnes was. So was Cameron Lyman, number 19, who was about 10 yards deeper than Barnes running freely. I have a feeling when Mike New takes a look at that one tomorrow night on the films, he's going to say, geez, I could have run or thrown it to two other guys. Well, the toughest thing for a young quarterback who's rolling out is vision. You know, all he's going to see is what is, is in his immediate vision. He isn't skilled enough yet to look over the field, which he'll have to learn to do as he plays. Kroon dances. Now starts back to his right. Pulled down at about the 29-yard line. Dave Belinsky again in on the tackle. belinsky has been a very, very productive defensive player. You know, it, as far as uh, Ball State defending its title, Based upon what I have seen in this football game today, there are a lot of things there that uh, makes this a quality football team with the exception of the quarterback position. Now, how long it takes Mike New to pick this thing up and start performing and cutting down on the mistakes and being productive, you know, no one knows. But if they were to get that from him, I think they would give people some problems as we get down deep into the Mid-American Conference schedule. Well, this time he is sacked in the backfield, had nowhere to go whatsoever. D.J. Ogilvy providing the defensive play. Well, when you look at the schedule for Ball State, they play at Miami next week. Certainly a, a realistic shot at a win there. And then they have Kent State at home. But before you know it, they could be 3-1 and one perhaps in the conference before it's all over as Clemson continues to lead Duke. D.C., a winner over Navy here this afternoon. BG to get it back one more time as we have a flag thrown on the play. He's and, gone. Oh my. One player to beat. <laughs> a hurdle play down to the 28 yard line before it's all over. And Bobby Green with a heck of a return. However, we did have a flag on the play. And let's see if the play stands up. Looked like Bobby Green was going to go all the way on that. I think he outsmarted himself. Sometimes when you just got the punter left, go ahead and be an athlete and try to run by him. Mike Harrison, the punter, was the player who slowed him up. Yeah, now watch Bobby Green. He's going to get through here. That's a good cut right there. Good blocking by the wall. Now, see, now, go ahead and run. You know, you, you're giving the punter too much credit. Go ahead and try to outrun him. Play stands, BG starts, first down and 10 from the 26-yard line with 5.18 left to go. Jackson now flops to the left side. Guichardo looking, 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 nobody around, and he finally hits the deck at about the 33-yard line. Man, those are, those are growing pains right there. You know, there were some people who had a chance to catch the football 
and uh, Guchardo didn't get the football there, and worse, he held on to it. Throw the football to uh, the blonde in the front row. I mean, don't keep it in your hands mm -hmm. and take the sack. Toughest thing in the world to learn, those split decisions by the quarterback. Do you run? Do you throw? Do you give up the football? If these young players would only watch Joe Montana play football, they would see what I'm talking about. He's not the most endowed athletically. He's not the strongest arm, but he's just the best quarterback. Leroy Smith on the delay inside the 30 to about the 29-yard line where Robert Glover finally wraps him up. See, the, the good quarterbacks have to learn to accept the good with the bad. I mean, you're going to have a lot of things happen to you out there on the football field that are going to be uh, extraordinary and sensational looking, but the little things are what, what make the difference. Throwing the football away, not taking the sack, hitting the short receiver. And it's tough to teach young people that that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. well, you got to give your offense a chance to make plays, too. Mm -hmm. If you get trapped back there, it's demoralizing after a while. Here they come again. Slaychik on a beautiful reception inside the 15. They're going to mark him out at about the 10-yard line, and it's also enough for the first down. Well, this is a good play from start to finish. Guchardo gets excellent protection. He can step right at the receiver, throws a nice tight spiral. Excellent pattern by Slaychik. Good results. The other thing that's frustrating is you've seen some positive things today from Guchardo and also Leroy Smith and Slaychick and Pat Jackson. They just haven't been able to put it together. Smith oh, on the delay, and he is drilled at about the 15-yard line. Denny Thompson and also Sean Turner in on the play. That's a wasted play, and it also wastes a lot of time. The clock is running. You need to throw the football into the end zone. You got 16 points down, and you need a field goal, and, and I mean, excuse me, you need two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. No time to waste. You're looking for the deception, I suppose. <laughs> it didn't yeah. work that time, did it? It hasn't worked all day. <laughs> Play action. Throw it into the end zone. Richardo throws it up. Pass was intended for Dave Hankins, but there was triple coverage at the goal line. You know, you got nothing to lose now. So, you know, so what? They intercepted, they intercepted. I mean, throw the football into the end zone, and let's see if you can't get a score here. And then come back, kick the ball onside, and take your chances. Sean Turner got a piece of that one to break up the play. Third down and 14, 307 left. Another look at it. Once again, too many people, too much pressure in the quarterback's face for the quarterback to feel comfortable with staying in the pocket. Uh, Guchardo has taken his share of hard hits here this afternoon. Just a three-man rush on this play. Picks out the receiver, and that is Leroy Smith out of the backfield. Not enough for the first down. No, that won't do it. Uh, but once again, Guchardo is, is just harassed. I mean, he's being... He's been under siege all day long. Not very much uh, pass protection. He's shown me a lot of courage, I'll tell you that. He's been belted a number of times here today. Well, fourth down. Well, he's got to be looking for number 84, Mark Slater. That's been his favorite receiver. Chased out of the pocket. Throws this one into the end zone. And right into the hands of Slaychik. I don't know if he ever saw it, Reggie. Well, there was some excellent eye communication between Guchardo and Slaychik. Slaychik was down and out. And I think Guchardo realized that he wasn't going to be able to get the ball to him in time. Slaychik turns back in towards the middle of the end zone, and Guchardo read it perfectly. You can see him looking to the right, then he looked back to the middle of the field, and Slaychik, beautiful communication, eye communication between those two. Second touchdown on the year for Slaychik. BG goes for two, and they finally end up with a touchdown, and then are penalized for delay of game. Oh, my. No, no, Ball State called timeout because I think Ball State only has 10 men on the field. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, maybe 12. 
They were the other way. Had too many. <laughs> they said, hold up. <laughs> hold on a second. We could defense them here, but we might yeah. be penalized. Well, a 12-yard TD reception for Mark Slachik, and uh, it's a bright spot and an otherwise fairly dismal afternoon. You know, it's, uh, when, when Bowling Green goes back next week and its players watches this football game, you know, they're going to be so upset with themselves. They're going to say, man, we had a chance to win this football game. That's why you never give up. You, you just keep trying to attack and to score. And too often, I think Bowling Green did not put themselves in a situation where they gave people an opportunity to make big plays, just as you saw Guchardo and Slachik make for the touchdown. Slachik now with nearly 100 yards receiving on the afternoon. They do have some skills, Reggie, and that's the one thing that's frustrating about watching BG. Well, you got some nice return people. Bobby Green showed us some things there, and uh, Leroy Smith, who is not 100% Leroy Smith. And, uh, you know, Guchardo is, is, is a spunky kind of a character. I mean, he makes he has made some plays, and that's what they were looking for. Well, he's done anything but give up in this one as BG goes for two with 2.15 left to go. In this no one. one's covering Slachik. No one's covering him. And that's what happens. Now we've got a flag on the play. Yeah, somebody forgot to guard number 84. Paul Schudel will be furious oh, at this. No, come on. Come on, Cardinals. I mean, does anybody that Duchardo has thrown the football to all day is number 84, Slachik, and they have no one out there on him? Penalty is against Bowling Green, though. I'll have to start the play over. That was uh, an odd one from the very beginning. Reggie looked up, just waited. Wait a minute, nobody's yeah. guarding 84. I mean, Slachik was out there waving his <laughs> arms. He's waving his arms out there to Guchardo, who can't believe it himself. And look, he almost throws it too, too short. We still don't know what the penalty is. Well, still going for the two-point conversion. Now the ball spotted on about the eight-yard line. Play action. Guchardo rolling to his right. Slachik makes the reception, but he is out of play, and so it's 16 to 6 with 2.15 left to go. So I think that's the wrong choice in play because you roll out with your quarterback into the short side of the field with only one receiver over there. Not many options. All right, 16 to 6. Don't forget, Sports Channel begins its coverage of the National Hockey League in October. That's just around the corner. Don't forget, you can watch all of the bone crunching action along the blue line all the way right to the Stanley Cups. Playoffs, of course, it's exclusive coverage, and it's only on Sports Channel. Check your local listings for times and teams in your area. I was beginning to think we weren't ever going to get a play from Bowling Green. <laughs> well, well, there have been three or four. The only problem is the minute they made a big play, they turned around and made a couple of bad ones. Yeah, I mean, that that you know, we're going to see an onside kick here, but we had a chance to, to ha see some drama going down mm -hmm. the stretch here because... I mean, when you're going for a two-point conversion like that, if you're going to roll out, then you need a multiple receiver set to that side. But it was easy to defend that play because there was only one receiver over there, Slachik, and there were two, there were three Ball State defenders on him. When you watch this game and you consider the fact that BG is running the football a little more, the success that they've had today has been throwing the ball. Mm -hmm. They need a big bounce here. Onside try. And a terrific defensive play turned in by Sean Turner, who nearly grabbed that thing and went back the other way with it. Yeah, that was real smart by Sean Turner, because what are you expecting when you're an onside kick coverage team? For the receiver to get the ball and then do the perfunctory, go down on one knee. But Sean Turner crossed everybody up and tried to pop it through that first wave. Interesting try that time with 2.11 left to go. Now all Ball State has to do is get a first down or two, and they can go 2-2 two and two on the season, 1-1 one and one in the back. Mm -hmm. Single well, back. Be, there'll be plenty of guys stripping at the football now from Bowling Green's side. Watch him try to hold them up and strip. This guy's hung on to it pretty well in his career, apparently. Well, he ran through that hole with two arms over the football. He wasn't about to let it go out. Good football player, Bernie Parmalee. Who's all the way from New Jersey. That's one thing about this Ball State program. They recruit from all over the country. They have a lot of players from the West Coast, some from the East Coast, some from the South. And they're not a regional recruiting football program. And of course, big plans on the board. Football stadium-wise here within the next two or three seasons. As you saw at halftime, they're opening up a brand new basketball facility next year. 
Probably says the heck with trying to salt this one away. I'm thinking about my second touchdown on the afternoon. Yeah, probably is going to make his uh, game stats look a little bit more impressive. You know, who knows? At the end of the game, tomorrow you read the paper, uh, Parmalee, 17 carries, 100 and some yards. No one cares if he got 50 of it on the last series. <laughs> well, this is uh, the time when you can get those easy yeah. yards and maybe even bust one. Yeah, you know, I used to say, too, hey, there are some tough times and some tough football games out there. If I got a chance to stay in the football game, pick up some yards, hey, so be it. Mm -hmm. Well, you've earned the right to do that when you've played during the tough situations more time he crashes inside the 10 and the thing that's uh, amazing is that he looks fresher now than he did like say in the second quarter and if you and if the, the defense the run defense from Bowling Green looks different than it was before is that because most of the Bowling Green defenders now are going for the football when you go to strip the football you tug at the arms you pull at the hands you try to tackle the ball and you don't think about stopping the runner plus it's a defense that's been on the field for the majority of the second half <laughs> They've seen a lot of action here today. Well, I think he might pop this one in there. Turned it back inside to about the six-yard line. That should do it. And that more than likely will put this one away. Ladies and gentlemen, read of all state home games. The media select one pizza hot player of the game from each team. Players start to take off their helmets, and uh, the Cardinals have come up. Reggie Rucker with a 16-6 victory here this afternoon. Paul Schudel was concerned last night. He said, you know, we really have to convince our kids that we've still got a shot at winning the Mid-American Conference. If we win tomorrow, that's a step in the right direction. We'll take a break here as this one has finished off 16-6. Ball State going 2-2 two two overall, 1-1 one one in MAC play. 